Hello, how you doing? Hi. We're currently live from very sunny Melbourne, slightly chilly but sunny Melbourne, and today we're going to be doing a bit of pixel art and other things for you. This is just our first of our live streams here, so bear with us if everything stops working halfway through, but it should be okay. And also bear with me getting really close to Mike when I want to say something, because the microphone is far away. <laughs> yes. Anyway, let's jump on over to have a look at what I'm working on at the moment. Whee! All right. So I'm currently working on some pixel art for the uh, various special weapons that I've I'm putting in at the moment, and. So it's things like grenades and other sort of explosions and that sort of jazz. So I started implementing all these special weapons oh, probably about a month ago now, but I've been lacking a lot of sprites for them. So there's been lots of placeholders of just squares and circles and things like that that pop up. So I've been trying lately to work through... Oh, and I'll give you a little look here at the sort of thing we're looking at. So that's like a magic explosion and that's a you know, more physical explosion. Oop. And we've got things like lightning effects and jazz like that. So I've been sort of having a bit of a nice time actually working on some pixel art lately, which has been really cool. And that's what I'm going to continue doing today. Haley's currently working on the God Mask face uh, that we've had done for a while, but we're recoloring him and sort of finishing up the shading on him as well. I'll give you a bit of a look at that in a second. Two, so let me just bring that up here. Yep. So that's what he's looking at. Looking like at the moment. So it's a way better colour palette than what it used to be. It used to be sort of a puke green, and uh, he's got way better shading too, as well, compared to what he used to have. But we're sort of slowly going through and kind of redoing him. Maybe kind of redoing some of the frames as well. Yeah, um, I have lots to get done, and we also have some ideas for some new animations for him too, so probably won't play around with those quite yet, I'll just shade in what I've already done, um, but yeah, there's quite a lot to get through. But anyway, that's enough talking about what we're going to do, let's actually keep on doing it, so let me get rid of him, I'm not touching him. Alright, so I've got a couple more explosions to do today I need a couple of smaller ones so I'm just going to get started so I'm just going to copy over what I've already got for the initial flash of the explosion and probably just a frame or two just so I can pick the colours out and reuse them again. I do have them in the palette over here, but sort of, I don't know, I find it easier to just copy from the existing image, so I'll grab that one. And that one. There we go. Alright. So I want a tiny little explosion, this one. So the original explosion has quite the big ring around it, big shockwave. I kind of want more of just like a little fireball, more than anything else. So I might actually, just on the shockwave layer here, I might just have a look at going with a general sort of fireball. So I'm just going to make a lumpy shape first. Probably like that. Yeah, it's pretty good. And what I'll do is I'll start expanding on him in a sec. 
I'll just quickly throw some shading on him as well and I'll see if I can get him expanding up nicely looking like an actual explosion bit of fire so I'm just kind of free handing this at the moment here kind of imagining that the light is coming from the very center here and then trying to work out you know if that was a big sort of you know fireball basically where the highlights would be so I'd say there's one floating up there probably one about there as well and I don't want it too pointed like it's um not like an actual you know campfire or something like that with the little licks coming up in this sort of way not too much of that because we're looking more at something that's kind of blowing outwards so I'm trying to keep it kind of fluffy I'll just grab some of that darker color there and put him up towards the top the sort of more like less oxygen up the top of the sort of fire is what I'm thinking here Whoop. could probably do with a little bit just in the middle here as well so I'm getting something like that for now let me just get rid of this guy and that guy because we're gonna do it in layers so I've got the sort of the basic fireball and then we've got the like the sparks and the sort of debris that come shooting out and then over the top of that as you can see in the original one here I've got the actual smoke layer as well so that's on a separate layer here and these all kind of blend together. In the actual game engine, these blend with sort of different modes. So the, because you can see I've got this background layer on here now. I have the smoke itself set to a, like a hard light. And that's similar to what I have it in the actual engine as well. So it blends somewhat with the background. It's somewhat transparent too. So this sort of blue background just gives me a, like a bit of an idea as what, to what I'm looking at here. Especially when doing things like this magical explosion. I'm basically drawing all in white, and if you turn your background off, you get the your checkerboard and you can't see diddly. So I've just got this blue background on here at the moment. One of the things I've got to be careful of is going to erase something and just selecting blue. So I end up with bits of blue all over my picture, but hopefully I can avoid doing that for the moment. So I've got that on the shockwave layer. So let's go next layer along. I'll just move that smoke out of the way. All right. So, I'll go set up this animation here, and I believe, yeah, we'll probably go about six frames or so, because this is going to be pretty small. Six, maybe seven. And I'm just going to set this up here so I can get my onion skinning going a bit. Great. So now looking at the same sort of thing, it's difficult because of the sort of perspective we have in Command, which is like, you know, sort of vaguely isometric, sort of 45 degree angle down. So you have to, like, circular objects are drawn on circular, but as soon as you start getting away from circular objects, they're not drawn quite in the same proportion. So with fire and things like that, I just tend to wing it and keep it mostly circular, but you can get away with having a little bit so it might, for example, whoop. So now I think about it, round that off just a little bit. But you can get away with it not having perfectly circular because, you know, it's fire. It doesn't always sort of work like that anyway. But now I'm just going to expand him out. So let me just fill that all in. So my general thinking is expanding the fire out. And as we do so, we're going to start to thin out in the very center. So this very central bit. We're going to start to lose a bit of him. And these bits that are thinning out, are out towards the outside, the sort of spread of the fire, we're going to get a bit thinner as we go out. Because it's kind of, think of it as it's running out of juice, it's running out of oxygen and fuel to burn so you've had a big explosion that's kind of going out and then sort of peters out so certain bits where right in between there we're going to tuck that in so you kind of end up with like little distinct clumps coming out 
And that's looking okay. It's the same thing. We'll do our little highlights down the bottom here. Again, trying to imagine now that your light's basically coming from here, 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 and here. More so in the middle because that's starting to run out of oxygen there and we're sort of expanding outwards. Once I've done with the fire here, I've got a bunch of other things to look forward to as well. So I've got, what am I doing today? Oh, I'd like to get a crossbow bolt done. At the moment, the crossbow fires bullets because I haven't been bothered to actually do anything up for him. So I'd like to do that. I've also got to do the, uh, redo the bullets for the shotgun because the shotgun bullets, um, basically uses the same size as the pistol bullets, but it ends up looking absolutely ridiculous because it fires out about six or seven of them. And it, um, it's a little bit overwhelming. I'll show you that in a bit when we actually get into the engine here. But for the moment, I'm just going to see how we're looking here so far. Okay. So I want to keep in mind between my different frames that I want some continuity. So I'm just looking down here now between each frame as to where the highlights are going. So you can imagine this one on the next frame moves over to here. That works well. This one here is moving over to there. This one's sort of breaking up into pieces, which works well as well. I think I might need something else down for here for this one. And I might start breaking them up. That's not too bad. Good for the sort of first pass through. So I'll start doing the the darker points here. Probably don't want dark right on top of light like that, but move him up. Let me just come in here, get rid of that. Move him down just a touch. You can imagine that this is almost the top of one of our little balls here, so I'm just going to pop that in there. Oh, there's ten of you watching now. How you all doing? That's quite a lot. That's not looking too bad. It's a little bit... Some bits that don't quite match up with, like, yeah, the continuity of where I wanted to go, but that's sort of easily fixed in a second. And, to be honest, most of it is going to get hidden under all these other layers of sort of shrapnel and smoke as well, so... That's not really a huge deal. So I'm going to keep going with him. And get rid of that big shockwave, move him out of the way. So same thing here, and at this point I'm going to want them to start breaking up into sm basically small little fireballs here. So I'm just going to cut in here some more, where I don't want him. So I'm just going to start spreading out. This fireball here, you can imagine that's one fireball. I'm going to move him out to here. So getting rid of that one there.
There we go. This portion here, same thing, I'm going to move him out to here and upwards. I think I'm going to make keep this as one big sort of long almost sausage up this way, so I'm just going to get rid of that there. And let me just pop that on so I can see it on my onion skin down the bottom here. That's called onion skinning, by the way. Where it lets you see the frame before or the frame afterwards so you get a good idea of what you're doing. So I'm going to put my big sausage sort of one in here, like that. Make him a little bit better of a curve there. Well, yeah, that's okay for the moment. Same thing with this portion here. I'm going to move him out to about there as well. So again, I'm just going to chop him. And move him out. How much? Just yeah. Get to there. And down the bottom here, same thing again. Going to move him out, but I'm going to keep this one a bit more intact. And just having like tiny little disparate blobs like this so we're sort of imagining this one's all kind of kept together more or less but it's obviously going to be sort of uh, darker so sort of you know it's starting to fade out it's not going to be quite as fiery as it was in the last couple of frames so you know, something like that and then we're going to end it up with some remnants in the middle here Little tiny bits left over. And these are going to be mainly just full of that darker shading. So none of the sort of light stuff so much in these because these are pretty much all dead or they're little sort of flames that are still burning on. So whatever was, you know, in the area when it exploded, you can imagine there's like little bits that are still on fire. Think of it more like that than part of the actual big explosion. And now, like before, we'll go back through and we'll shade him up. So, like I was talking about, we're trying to maintain continuity here. Looking over this side, there's this bit here. So the highlight was on the sort of right side there, which makes sense because we're looking at the light coming from the middle. So again, we're sort of thinking light generally coming from the middle, so coming from this way, sort of outwards to each of these. So this was that bit that we've moved here. We'll put the light roughly on this side here. Probably not going quite up as high as that. Somewhere around there. And then we've got this long sausage one here, which was sort of these bits all combined together. Whoop. Let's go on there. I find it when doing things like this, it's good to sort of take a second to try to work out exactly where you think the light's going to come from, sort of logically, or at least if it's not logically, it's consistent between all of your frames and between all of your different explosions because it helps it sort of look cohesive. It also makes it easier to just know what you're doing and you're not just kind of just randomly chucking stuff everywhere and kind of wasting your time about it. And we'll go a little bit down here for this one. But it's one of those things you kind of get used to, especially if you're um, new to pixel art or art in general. It's kind of um, difficult to wrap your head around at times, but once you get it, you kind of... You kind of always have it. It's like once you sort of get past that hurdle of where do I put the light, um, you'll find that lots of pixel art starts to become a lot easier. Especially things like this. And a lot of people have trouble with things like clouds. Um, initially as well, you know, it seems relatively simple to draw a cloud, but a lot of people tend to have like you know, a lot of problem with that. Um, it's always something that someone wants to draw relatively early on when they're doing pixel art for some reason, I guess because of all those lovely pictures on Instagram and things like that and Twitter of people drawing clouds, but... I wanted to draw clouds earlier. <laughs> there you go. 
But yeah, it's one of those things, if you don't know where the light's coming from, it's kind of difficult, so you got to... But most people don't think about that when they go to draw it. They just start and they go, yep, great. Um, but yeah, it's, it's, you've got to think, oh, the sun's up here, or, you know, the sun's down there, and sort of draw it that way around, and I find that's the sort of way to go. Because basically what I'm doing here is kind of drawing slightly rough clouds, really. Fire clouds. <laughs> Sort of do, and down here we've got a bit there as well. So I'll bring them around there. Hello, everyone. That's good to see you all here. We got a lot of people watching. Eighteen people now. Oh, that's awesome. I thought I'd be sitting here by myself, to be honest. <laughs> um, anyone got any good questions or anything for us so far? Not yet. Crack it open on. Yeah. And yours actually, that makes sense. Let's do it that way around. Okay. There we go, a little bit there, and that's starting to look pretty good. So even looking at it at this point. Only a couple of frames done and shading missing on the last one, but we kind of, you can see what we're getting at there. See, it's starting to spread out. Let me just slow that down just a little bit. There you go. You gotta go up. And ignore the little bit of smoke at the very end. Yeah. That's looking great. So the, the reason there is this flash at the middle, of, if anyone's sort of wondering, is that tends to be well i find that it tends to help sell like a big explosion or a big hit is sort of having just this big white flash to start with and then from there the explosion actually starts and it's often smaller than that flash was you can see i've also got this in the finished large explosion up here and the flash that actually starts is quite a bit um bigger than the explosion actually is when it starts up so i'll, I'll Open this one up here. Oh, turn the smoke back on. Oh, look at that on for some reason. There we go. So this is the original explosion, the bigger one that we're kind of working off here. And you can see, yeah, that, that flash to start with. Because obviously this is playing back about half the speed of what it does in the game. But that flash does help sell that there is, like, there's an explosion, there's a bang there, and... And, um... Yeah, it sort of, I don't know, it just helps sort of register the impact in your brain. Uh, question there, what do we got? Are you planning on leaving the live stream up on YouTube later? Because a number of people will, uh... Yep, no, that's, yeah, totally am. Um, yeah, I'll be going straight up on U uh, YouTube later, the live stream, as a VOD. Um, I'll probably just trim out any pauses that we have in between if we take a break or anything like that i'll edit those out but um but yeah like yeah they'll be going up no dramas at all i understand yeah especially like yeah uk 3 a.m <laughs> i know it's kind of rough well thank you very much ricardo <laughs> Alright, so back to our small explosion here. And so we're going to spread everything out again, continue what we we're doing, except now everything's going to start to peter out. Oh, sorry, I haven't even shaded the dark parts yet. I should probably do that before I jump ahead. Although maybe you could argue that I don't really need it because I didn't even notice. Yes, Metal Slug, yes. Metal Slug has amazing explosion. And yes, you're right, they do. They do the black, then the white. I actually did try that, and it was um, a little bit too dramatic for, for our sort of art style. 
it's kind of like the explosion is the most overblown thing ever if I do that. But yes, that is a very good point. Yeah, Metal Slug's got like the best pixel art ever anyway. No, Evan, um, no, I've just been, well, we haven't been live for very long. I've just been working on an explosion here. We've got a couple of explosions that need to be done and a couple of other sort of special effect type bits of pixel art. And I'm just sort of slowly working my way through them. All right, so let's see if I can finish up these bits. Just quickly. These darker portions here really aren't as absolutely vital as you can see compared to the highlights. That's not too bad. We mainly want them up towards the top to really sort of help show that like the, the sort of like uh, fuel and oxygen stuff sort of fire. So up towards this end, we don't have much in the way of highlights. So we really want to bring some of this down just a bit to show that it's kind of petering out. And same here. You can also help, yeah, using this sort of shading can really help uh, define the different sort of um, like spheres that you're making up of, the different sort of blobs in the cloud, and can help give it a bit more sort of volume as well. There we go, that's pretty good for the moment. I mean, it can always go back and touch bits up, but you can kind of do that forever. But for right now, that's pretty much good. So we're gonna go to the next frame and same thing again, using my onion skinning down here. I'm just going to move everything out just a touch. Now these little bits in the middle, I think they can pretty much go away at this point. So we're basically only really looking at the main sort of balls of fire. So I'm just going to pop a little one there. I think this one's gone a bit further down and has finally broken off somewhat from the next one along. And so when I'm drawing this, I'm more looking at the actual onion skin down here not looking at up here where I'm actually drawing, so I'm just sort of following down there. And it's it's very sort of rough, but you're just getting things in the right position. You're not so, so much worrying about like their actual shape yet, because you can always just go back and tidy that up when it's ready to go. Now this one on the side, oh, keep moving that around. This one on the side, I'm gonna make him go a bit more out this way than what I've got in there at the moment. So let me just cut him off. That's good. Same thing up here. And I'm gonna split him apart again, or very close to it. And I reckon I'm gonna split that as well. There we go, that's pretty good. So I might do something about the um, the little embers in the middle that continue to burn, but I'll probably do that on a different layer as well. Uh, hey Tyler, how you doing? Oh, we've got a question here. Haley, you want to read out that question for us? Yeah. That's a, kind of a long one. I'm just going to keep going with this one here. So I believe it's talking about... I'm looking at a tiny little screen here, so I'll get Haley to read out that question. I believe it's about uh, game design in schools. Oh yeah, so um, a discussion point. Do you think that game design um, production or anything creative really needs to be learnt at school or at college? Ah, ah. Um, that is a pretty good question. I, hmm, 
Alright, what is your opinion? Well, I studied fine art at college. Do you reckon that helps you right now, though? Um... Like, I know it's not specifically game design related, but... I think it helps with, um, like, technical stuff. So you can go there and you can learn technical things. Like, if you, like talking from fine art perspective if you want to learn how to oil paint from someone who's really good at oil painting they can teach you the technical skills it's not necessarily something you have to learn no but does that help you like in that? game design at all like do you find, do you have anything from your fine art mm. um degree like does that help you or is it you know do you wish that you for example were doing um you know would you have preferred to have done something else if you were looking at doing this sort of thing when you were going to uni um no i reckon it helps um like just like all the like basic like art stuff i learned like life drawing now if i want to draw something i've got a good idea about proportions and negative space and stuff like that so i think the basics carry over yeah i think like that's probably pretty much my view so i didn't study game design or anything like that um i did a bachelor of multimedia <laughs> um which is kind of a nonsense degree that's like halfway between graphic art and um it now um i think game design might have existed when i was at university but it certainly wasn't a popular thing it wasn't a big deal then like this is going back quite a while now um but in terms of like is it something that you have to learn i don't think so like you've got so much available now that um like elsewhere like especially just on the internet in general that like you can pick up so much i mean I, I was doing a lot of sort of game design related stuff without having any sort of formal training in it or anything like that um i don't like i think there's a there is something to be said for doing it like one of the best things about going to like a college or um, a school or anything like that is you're with like-minded people doing the same sort of thing that you're doing and so you know you you actually and you're forced into doing whatever it is so you're, you're actually going to be making games and you're going to be making them with other people that want to make games um that's like there were a lot of people doing my degree that wanted to do film or television and things like that and you know i made a lot of like film projects and things like that with people that are you know into film and that's why i'm pretty good at filming stuff now so um I mean, there is something to be said for that, but I don't think, as in terms of, like, is it a, like, super mandatory idea, like, you want to get a job in it? I don't think so, and, yeah. um, I think from, like, a hiring perspective as well, if you're actually wanting to go work for someone else, I think it's more about demonstrating what you can do and what you have done would be way ahead of any sort of degree, especially in, in my sort of opinion. If I was hiring someone, I'd be like, what have you done? And have a look at it, rather than, like, oh, yes, you got a degree, what have you done? Nothing, you know, it's not really gonna sell it to me. But like, you know, I imagine there's quite a few people that watch this channel that have actually done game design and similar. But, um, and, you know, their opinion probably varies. I mean, yeah, I really haven't done it. Uh, it wasn't much of an option. Uh, I need a teacher and a student. A student has an interest in a teacher. Yeah, well, that's, yeah, I think that's, yeah. that's pretty much it. Yeah, I think that's that's true so like the teacher can be a book or it can be resources you find online or it can be like i don't know like a community like forum thing you go to for help and stuff yeah that's it or like you know hanging out and game, doing game jams and yeah, things like yeah. that would very much help like if you know you can't you go to a game jam um sort of session with no knowledge of how to make games i mean you're going to pick it up pretty quick and people are going to you know be pretty quick to teach it that's if there's someone there that knows what they're doing of course <laughs> unless you're all kind of just leading each other around uh, what, have I, what else have I got here? Taka Taka, that's a good name. Uh, well, the live stream's always been around this time. Um, probably more or less. Like, this is about midday for us here. Um, but we might do some in the sort of evenings or, or sort of way earlier in the mornings because I know that does fit in better with different time zones. But, um, yeah, we'll just have to have a bit of a look. This is more of like a test than anything else right now. We are hoping to keep this regular um, to at least a certain degree. But this is more of just giving it a go and seeing if it works and that sort of jazz. Uh, Gabriel, greetings from Brazil. Oh, hello. What time is it in Brazil at the moment? I imagine it's not midday. <laughs> <laughs> All right, and as we've been talking there, I've gone through and done roughly the same sort of thing as I've been talking about earlier. I've put in some more highlights here. So let's go back through, and I'm just going to do the dark shading as well. And I'm just going to pop that in real rough. Uh, other questions we got there. Uh, 
How do you feel about Game Maker Studio 2 and the Goto engine? Uh, you feel, uh, do you think engine that you have to pay for a better than one that opens? No, definitely not. Okay, so, um, Game Maker 2 looks pretty good, to be honest. Um, like, I, I'm, we're using Game Maker 1 here, or 1.4, or whatever it is. And the reason we were using that is because Game Maker 2 was not in a proper, uh, like, release state, um, when we started Bannerman. And I, I, um, commandment, I should say. And I refuse to update engines throughout a project. I think that's a, I've done it before, and it's broken things very badly so i always avoid doing that i basically like right this is the version we're using make sure it's stable and everything great it works don't touch it until it comes out um so i had like you know 500 updates to game maker by the time the banner man released and things like that um game maker 2 does look pretty good now i have i have not used um go to engine at all before but uh, open source engines are great. There's nothing wrong with them. The only the only real problem you can have is on certain engines, um, like the one I used to use for Berserker Quest and things like that, for example, was a uh, it's called the Dark Places engine, and that was that's an open source engine because it's based on Quake One. So um, the problem with that is there were less people using it than say something like Unity. Definitely, like there's basically hardly anyone using the Dark Places engine, and the problem was is certain resources for it are pretty, and um, tool support and things like that were pretty spotty at best. And that could be a problem that you encounter with uh, open source engines because, you know, people are making it in their own time and they can only contribute certain things, um, you know, because of their own time and that sort of jazz because it is open source and that's the nature of it. But if it is popular enough, then I don't think that's really going to be a problem at all. And, um, yeah, there's no, there's no way that, like, paid is better than free or, or free as in... You know speech free as in beer um that sort of thing but um yeah i think it's it more just comes down to like the sort of support that is available for it because if you do encounter problems like i i had um in i believe it was berserker quest i had like a pretty big rendering issue and th there was basically no help and i had to go basically dive in through the source code to try to fix it up myself and it was a nightmare and I never really got it fixed, so I just kind of ended up just working around it, I'm pretty sure. And that's something that if you were using Unity, you'd put out a support ticket and da ding you're done. And, you know, they'd fix it up for you, most likely. Alright, what have we got here? Uh, 430. Yes, yes, definitely. <laughs> um, yeah, no, we're gonna, we'll, we'll try to organise a time that works best for everyone, even if it is perhaps us streaming, like, later than we would normally be working or something. We'll work something out. Because, yeah, we fully appreciate that most people watching aren't, um, you know, here in Melbourne as yeah. well, so. And if you are in Melbourne, you might be at work right now. Yeah, exactly, <laughs> you know, like, like what we are, really. So, so yeah, um, we'll come up with something. We'll try to Ooh. play around. Knocking stuff over. Uh, da -da 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 -da. It's going to be an epic exclusive, you know, that's good. Um, <laughs> very nice. No, I don't. Uh, I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> I I must admit I haven't really been keeping up with um with Epic lately, apart from just the sort of general um, knowledge that they have a store. I know this. I know people aren't real happy about it, but I haven't really kept up with much more than that, to be honest. I've been rather busy, and I try to avoid um, things that don't immediately concern me like that. Like I know sort of Epic might in the future, but right now. We're not near release or anything, so it's, I haven't really kept up with it at all. Is there anything juicy? <laughs> <laughs> uh, what else we got here? Uh, Where do we see ourselves five years from now? Oh, I'd like it to be much the same, but with probably more money, it'd be nice. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. What do you reckon? Yeah. So, like, at the moment, I work part-time at a, like, just a, a normal retail job. And I work part-time on the game. So, like, five years from now, it would be really nice if it was just full-time working on games and having, like, a real steady income from that. That would be amazing. Yeah, that's pretty much... I'd just like to see, um, sort of growth like like that, essentially. So, my idea... My, um, basic concept when I was doing Bannerman Up, the, my, my goal for it was to make enough money that, uh, Hayley and I could work on the game, like, the next game without having to have other jobs so it got pretty close it's like you know a couple of days a week as opposed to you know not having to work at all but um you know next one i'd like that to be totally yep don't have to work anywhere else at all and that's all sorted and then you know ones after that same sort of thing you know it's going on from there 
Uh, I don't want. I don't know, have no dreams of you know notched them or anything like that. You know, with my my giant mansion or anything that sort of jazz. I just want to do this for a living, basically. And you know, if if it means that you know you can have holidays and things like that in there too, because you got enough money to cover all that, then that'd be nice as well. Uh, da -da 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 -da. Which was easier for you to do, 2D or 3D, and what do you recommend? That's a good question. I I started with 3D, so I find 3D easier. And I have never worked in 3D, so that'll be something to come, I'm sure. I think, I having done both now, I think that they're probably about equal. They they both have easy bits, they both have hard bits in different ways, so... Um, oh, yeah, like... Animation in 2D, depending on the sort of animation you're doing, can be absolutely painful. Things like rotoscoping, like I inflicted upon myself with Bannerman, <laughs> takes so long and is very you know, time-consuming. But same can be said for certain types of animation in 3D as well. So it's, yeah, it's, I don't know, they're different skill sets and they do overlap. But like one thing in one will be really easy and one thing in another will be really hard and they kind of balance out, to be honest. It's in the US. Uh, ah, so Austin, uh, I'll show you events this before. How long have you been working on games? Haley too. Ah, uh, Haley, well, you haven't been mine's, working. Mine's easier to answer. I've been working on games since we started this project. Yeah, so that's since it. Since we started Commandment, that's my first journey into game dev. I've been sort of exposed to it, but not working directly in it. Yeah, yeah. So, like, I guess when when Mike used to make, um, you know, before Bannerman. Um, he was playing around with games, doing it more of a hobby. Like, um, I, you know, watch what he was doing and like try and help with problems, mainly just by listening and help with just listening so he could talk through it basically. <laughs> but um, yeah, so I've been exposed to it, but I haven't actually worked on anything until this project. So I'm really enjoying it. I love it. I want to keep doing it. I've been. Um... Yes, I know. Sorry, we only got one mic. I, I know, it's terrible. <laughs> we'll, we'll fix that. We'll fix that eventually. <laughs> like I said, test. Test stream. <laughs> um, uh, how long have I been working on games? Uh, as a hobbyist for quite a, like a, quite a long time. Um, hang on, let me... Uh, let me think. So, I mean, like, yeah. Long, long time. I started doing Quake mods back in the day. Quake 1 mods. So that was in when I was in high school would probably be and even before that but like quake one mods i actually did release them they went up on god what was it called i can't remember file planet i think it was was like the um like where you could get all your mods back in the day i think they went up on there i'm pretty sure we still have a cd hidden somewhere yeah, we do. with some of your quake mods on it yeah so it's like yeah that was like you know i actually did release them obviously they weren't paid or anything like that but paid mods didn't exist back then um <laughs> but uh yeah so like yeah i've been doing sort of thing for a while but um uh in terms of commercial now i mean like now it's like yeah bannerman and this so what's that that's about three and a half years or something so that's starting to sound pretty impressive too i suppose so all up i'd probably say about oh, I don't know, maybe about 15 years hobbyist and and actually getting paid for it as well uh what else we got favorite video games uh i love deus ex i think it's like pretty close to perfect and system shock 2 would be very high up there as well i also do am a big fan of morrowind and other elder scrolls games as well but morrowind has a special place in my heart um i really like american mcgee's alice oh uh, yeah it's really good um and my favorite game from when i was a kid is oh it's part of a game dare to dream 2 <laughs> <laughs> I played that. Yeah, it was that's like a little... Cliff, isn't it? Cliffy yeah, B. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's yeah. his first game. Cliffy B's first game um, before he did anything else. Have it. You can give that to Google. Dare to Dream. It's um, <laughs> it's it was made in like um, like Visual Basic. Yeah, yeah, like Visual Basic One, which was like an <laughs> like an absolute abomination, and um, <laughs> and like all the all the um arts made in paint. <laughs> Yeah, I actually played that when I was a kid too, which is kind of weird. Like, I don't think it was particularly popular or anything. I mean, although it must have been, like, he ended up sort of going places after that, so it must have done something. <laughs> yeah, Dare to Dream, yes, another Dare to Dream, there we go, beautiful. <laughs> Very 
the yeah, the extra I, like just the fact that things like made me visual basic. I just shake my head. I used to play around with visual basic back in the day. That's, oh. Does that even still exist anymore? It probably does actually. They probably use it for point of sale systems or something. Alright, this is probably the last frame of the fire here. I reckon these are probably still a bit, little bit too thick. And sort of haven't degraded enough from the last one, so I might just start taking little bits out. And they can kind of start getting... I've been trying to keep them fluffy, but I think they can start getting a little bit wispy here because they're pretty much all gone. Kind of looks like a face, so I'm going to get rid of that and change that around. So it doesn't. Now it probably looks more like a face. Okay. Uh. Until two years ago, your company still used Visual Basic 6. Holy hell. Wow. 6. Like, I'm pretty sure, like, I'm pretty sure 6 was what I was using when I was just playing around with it. Like, again, probably back in high school. Isn't that ancient now? Like, what are they even up to now? 6. <laughs> well, yeah, I'm pretty sure it was six I was playing around with. <laughs> All right, let's see how this is looking here. Last little bits. Hello, Andrew! <laughs> How you doing, buddy? Hey, Andy! <laughs> Alright. Oh, let me get rid of that smoke, that's really annoying me. Oh, that's good, buddy. Glad to hear it. Alright, let's have a look at this little bit of an explosion there. Oh yeah, that's looking alright. It's a bit off-centre for where the um, shockwave is. That's looking nice. So that's just the one layer. So we're going to keep going from here and do some smoke and things like that next. But that's looking pretty good. I don't think it fades out enough on this last one here. I think there's probably still a bit too much going on there. And I might like to have some sort of these ones persist for a little bit longer so I'm just going to fix that up before we jump onto the smoke which will be super quick and easy alright make sure I'm all on the right layer there I am, thank you <laughs> layer panic number of times I've done that where I've just on totally the wrong layer for the entire thing. I just I should always remember to switch back when I go to switch to move something. Switch back. Visual Basic six ended long term support in two thousand well, two thousand eight. Wow. Uh, Visual Basic is uh, okay. So they're going to C sharp. Dot net framework. I suppose that does make sense. Oh no. I bet some people are probably pretty sad about that, actually. Like, I I don't have any particularly bad memories of Visual Basic. Not really, but I kind of... I remember kind of buggering around with it with, like, absolutely no programming language because you could kind of, you know, click and drag in, like, buttons and checkboxes and bits of text and stuff and, you know, just kind of make an absolute nonsense with it, which was pretty fun. It was kind of fun to play around with as a kid. I mean, none, none of it would work. You actually need to code something up so it works. But, you know, you can click the buttons and nothing happens. It's pretty good. <laughs> it's like the world's worst game. Okay, so, what do we got there? That one's, yeah, that's a bit better. For that one there. Let me turn the onion skinning off. That's a bit better. So they've actually got a bit that stays around behind them. And I'm going to do the same with this very last one here. I think this is all a bit too full on. And it hasn't died down enough. Musical and Commandment have been on production yet. 
not not really kind of sort of yeah. um there's kind of demos for it but um not really anything actually happening um as of yet but they are um john and josh this is uh, are meeting up shortly actually to to sort of start up with like i think the first recording which will be for the trailer um yeah as a and because like the animation for that's nearly done now so kind of yeah so <laughs> i've just got to actually edit that together now so but um yeah we also need the music for it sort of thing so um yeah soon maybe hopefully i don't know yeah i don't know i've kind of been putting it off putting it all out of mind to be honest uh is a new game a side scroller no it's not it's a um top down roguelike or isometric roguelike i should probably say somewhat isometric somewhat top down i'm not even sure what the actual right name for this perspective is yeah i'm sure it's i'm sure someone knows but i don't <laughs> Alrighty, and oh, look, I'm gonna do one more frame, but I'm literally just gonna copy this over and cut most of this out and just leave a little wispy bits because I feel like I kind of need some. Oop. Okay. Alright, and then with this done, we should be probably pretty ready to go on to the smoke, which. All things being very lucky, I might be able to more or less copy the smoke and alter it slightly from the explosion I've already done, because that is how you'd make games. You think smart. You think you work smart, not hard. But no, I should probably have to I'll probably have to modify it a bit and um to sort of make it appropriate for the right size, but it'll probably work out alright if I do that, so. So I'm just gonna move everything out just a touch. For those ones. All right, let's give it a little play. Yeah, it's looking pretty good. I'm pretty happy with that. The actual fire there. Probably got too many little bits at the end. Let me just turn the speed up here a bit because it is a bit, a bit slow, a bit hard to tell. That's not bad. Yeah, looks good. I think there's probably too many of these little debris bits left to, left behind, so let me clean them up just a little bit. I'll just fix up just some of these little bits here where they can have a little bit more Uh, that's fine over there. Put it here. Actually, it's probably too far up now. I think about it. There we go. Music. Um, I own this music. This is music for my game. And I have not, uh, when I published this, I did not elect to um, enforce the copyright on YouTube. So uh, music should be all good. If it's not, then I'll have quite the argument with the people that claim they own it. <laughs> At least I believe this is all my music. Let me just double check that music list. Yes, it is. Yes. Just make sure I didn't slip something else in there. There's no red hot chili peppers playing on the playlist or anything like that. Oh, thank you. Yeah, I forgot. I've just Good been, tip. I've just been making explosions. <laughs> Cheers, buddy. <laughs> I'm just drawing a face over and over. Yeah, well, it's, yeah. 
Whatever makes you happy, I suppose. All right, let's have a look. See what we got. Bum, 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 bum. That's better. There we go. All right, I'm officially happy with the fire from that explosion. Now it's time to copy over the smoke from the other one and see if it just works as is, because that would be juicy if it does, because it means I don't have to do anything. So let's have a look. That one there. Might just have to move it around a bit, which would be quite nice. just wanted to say that's exactly what I am doing right now. I am looking at all my frames and I'm going, have I done one that's really close to this before that I can just copy over? That's the good thing about pixel art, I suppose, is you can have bits where you're just like, yep. Yep. And then if I can't find one that's really similar, I'm like, oh, I have to start from scratch again. <laughs> How's it look with the... Oh, it's not bad. Oh, it's all right. I might, I might adjust it a bit, but that's not bad. Okay. I'm pretty happy with that. Somewhat. That's a big explosion. That's a little one. It's not even like a little explosion. It's more just like a different explosion. You know, there's a different type of explosive. So, I mean, it's kind of radius in game. It's a little bit smaller, but, you know, it's just in case you're wondering, they're looking about the same size. It's like, nah, that's, that is sort of right for it. So, I'm just going to round him out a bit more towards the top here because he's. Looking a bit strange. That's about okay. So now let's adjust some of this smoke. Smoke. Alrighty. Alright, so, um, the original smoke's a little bit wispy here, so I'm just going to join a bit more of it together because I think it's, it works well for the yellow explosion because there's lots of little sort of bits of shrapnel flying everywhere. This one's not really going to have much shrapnel, and it makes sense that the shrapnel's kind of poking holes in the, the, uh, smoke. That's sort of like the idea of why the other one's so wispy, and, um, there's got basically so many holes through it is because it's kind of, you know, getting interrupted, blown apart by things. But I'm just going to, it's more or less like working pretty well for it. So I'm just going to join some of these other portions together here really quickly. And then we can pretty much reuse it as is, which is nice. And I might just get rid of some of the more extraneous ones on the peripheries. Do you uh, consider Bannerman to be a success or a flop? I consider it a success because it um, enabled us to make the next game. So, awesome. Like, did I, did I become a millionaire? No! Um, could I have made more if I just worked full-time, like, in my sort of regular job, like, as a graphic designer? Definitely. But, you know, now I can actually make another game, which is pretty cool. And, um, yeah, sort of don't have to do that other job anymore, which is pretty cool. But no, yeah, it's gone pretty well, actually. I'm pretty excited with um, with how it went, to be honest, with the exception of, you know, sort of the horrible time I had on, on release with it. It's actually been pretty good. Um, still sells every day. Um, still get, you know, copies every week. And every time it goes on discount, it um, sells quite a bit as well. So it keeps ticking over. Um, did really well in the Australia Day sale, which was recently... Um, yeah, the, I think the first time I did it was this year that I'm... That I'm aware of um and that did really well actually sort of extraordinarily well in that sale so yeah i am happy with how it's gone so far i'm like yeah it ain't no minecraft but you know it was never meant to be in the first place so uh let me finish up with getting rid of some of these bits here
And I'm just gonna thin it out a bit. And let's have a little look see at that and see if I've accidentally cut out too many of these or anything like that. This one here needs to go. Where is that? There he is. Get rid of him. Okay. And... That's looking alright. Okay, let's add in the fire. Boom. Pretty good. Now, something that's really annoying me is the fire is kind of off-center. It starts a bit too low, so I'm just going to cut and paste that and move it up just a touch. I basically, when I just started drawing, I started too low, so let me just... There. Think of any names for the game? Yes, we did. Um, we're still mulling them over though. We've got a couple of um, contenders that are almost ready to go. We're feeling pretty happy. Yeah, just want to make sure we really like it before we announce it to the world. Yeah, that's it. But it'll be good to actually get that done because then we can do things like actually put up a bloody Steam page for it and get some wish lists and things like that. That's also why we're doing the um, animation for the trailer and things like that early as well, or early-ish. Um, so we can get that all up on Steam pretty quick. I'm pretty happy with that as an explosion. I reckon that's pretty good. Um, there is, like, yeah, I do have the shrapnel from the other one. I don't think I really want to add much of that. I might just leave it as is. So I'm just going to export this now without the background. Uh, you likely probably can't see this because of the way my capture thing set up, but I'll be, you'll be able to see it in just a sec. I'm just popping this in the right folder here. Ta-da! We have saved. Okay. Well, maybe you can see it. I don't know. Sometimes the optional, the additional windows and dialog boxes are kind of invisible on the stream um, due to the way we've got it set up. So if that is the case, I apologize if you end up missing anything like that. So the reason I was doing this explosion here is because this is going to be working in with the uh, the lightning um, sort of special effect that we have. So the, one of the abilities we have is it's basically a random lightning strike. Um, that you can sort of trigger whenever you want. So the lightning comes down from the bottom, uh, down from the ceiling, or just from above, and then goes boom. And I needed a different explosion for that one. So that's what this one's for. There's the other explosion is for the actual, um, the grenade or the old school Grenado type grenade. So let's have a look. So uh, I believe I had the uh, lightning up earlier for you. So this is, uh, let's have a look. It's a, just a simple lightning animation. Bang, bang, bang. And it just comes from above. This is really huge in terms of scale. Like the player, for example, is... Because it is a relatively small... Uh, Low-res sort of game, this one. So the player's like that big. I'm pretty sure from memory. Hang on, what have we got? So, 32. Yeah, so he's, he's roughly about that big, the player. So this, all, this extends off screen, basically. Is the whole idea. Hi! Hi, Kate. <laughs> yeah, so let's have a look. Now, I might actually just jump into Game Maker here, I reckon. So let me just try to swap on over to Game Maker. Whoa, there we are. Okay. So let me just pop this actual explosion in. And I might just show you the... Um, the other explosions that we've got at the moment, just a little bit of the actual game that's in progress at the moment. And then, because we've been streaming for a while now, I might actually take a bit of a break. Because what are we on? We're at, uh, what's that, an hour and 20 minutes? Bloody hell. Time flies. Yeah. I know, right? Let's do that pretty well. So let's have a look. So, uh, visual effects, special effects. Glad to see you both working with that lot of passion to this day. Yes! 
Yes, we love it. Um, it's the best job I've ever had, is working for myself doing this. So. I look forward to continuing to do it. I mean, you always have bad days and things like that, but... Um, yeah, no, it's been pretty good so far. I hope that this sprite page is showing up for you. Let me just check in OBS here. It looks like it is. Okay, cool. Um, Game Maker, the way it captures, is very, very strange um, on here, so I've had to sort of try to work around a couple of things, so um, bear with me if there's the occasional thing that you can't see or something like that. Um, I'll try to fix that up in the future. Like I said, test stream! Alright, so I've got my uh, sprite there, so I'm just going to call that uh, Tesla. Ooh. Explosion! There's a Tesla lightning there. And I got him there as an animated GIF or GIF if you prefer, <laughs> but it's always GIF. I know that, <laughs> but I know I know the person that made the format calls it GIF, but he's objectively wrong. wrong. <laughs> uh, just make sure I got my explosion lined up like I probably should here. Let me just do that there. Yeah, cool. Excellent. Okay, so there is a collision mask on. This one? So... I wonder if you can actually see the collision mask at all. I don't think you can, sorry. So it won't be one sec. Let me just fix this up. Like I said, it's pretty strange in a way. It doesn't always capture... everything we need it to. Alright, that's pretty much done. Sorry about that. Okay, I'm just going to show you how the current sort of explosion looks in game and everything like that. Now, this takes a little bit to start up here, so... I get to have a little bit of a break while it... Uh, while I first save and then I compile. This will be popping up shortly. It does take OBS a little while to catch up with the fact that commandments actually open here, so... Might be a few seconds until... You can see it. Let's jump across here. Can you see it? You can see it now, apparently. Okay. So I've got this... Um, this is basically with a bunch of debug stuff on, like the enemy's vision cones and things like that turned on here. But I'm just going to see if I can show you the sort of thing, because I'm doing all these special abilities at the moment and sort of what that actually entails. So uh, There's a whole bunch of them in game. This first one is basically a teleport, a blink. There, which I've been working on. Which lets you to blink to wherever your cursor is, but not pass through walls, you always get blocked by walls or objects that can't be broken. If objects can be broken, you go through them. Let's finish these guys off. Now, this is what I was talking about with the shotgun. Looking absolutely ridiculous at the moment and why I need to get uh, other bullets done up for him. But let's see if I can fix this up here. That's another ability there. It's got the homing projectiles that shoot out at your enemies. Whoop. Ah, we've also got throwing weapons and things like that now, but let's see if I've got other special abilities here that are all done at the moment. That is the Tesla effect ability, but he uh, doesn't work yet because I haven't coded him. Ah, there's a grenade. Grenade is the one I was looking for because it's actually got the explosion, so you can pop them out like that. Bounces off and goes pop and blows up. So he draws that sprite that we saw earlier, but he also has a like a glow sprite based on that as well that accompanies the explosion. So he's quite glowy and pretty. 
And yes, thrown weapons have gunshot sounds at the moment. But that's because I haven't done any sounds for them. Alright, cool. Bye bye. Screen capture. Yeah, desktop capture. Yeah, I might have to, but at the moment we don't really have it. So, hmm. Uh, what else we got on here? What other adaptation of this game was ever made? Who would you cast in it? Get stuff, Lucas. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, you. Thanks, thanks. It's good. Um, it's a game's launched. Do you like most or got inspiration? Zelda Breath of the Wild. You know what? I, I haven't even... I barely played Zelda Breath of the Wild at all. I, um... That's basically my sister's got it on the Switch and that's it. I don't have a Switch, so... I don't have anything to play it on. I'm not really big on the consoles, I must admit, either. Uh, yep. Let me just bring that up there because I'm not really doing anything at the moment, so you can actually see us. <laughs> Sorry, Lucas. Uh, in terms of recent games, what have we been play some, playing recently? I'm trying to think. I've been playing like lots of small indie titles from like years ago, so <laughs> so I haven't really played anything that's actually sort of come out in recent history. I must admit. No. I've just been playing Elder Scrolls. Yeah, online. Elder Scrolls Online. Uh, oh yeah. Yes. Um. Yeah. Like I said before, the screen capture. Yeah, I might have to just do full desktop capture for Game Maker because for whatever reason I doesn't like it. Everything else seems to work alright, but yeah, that's cool. I'll get around to it. But it, it does work mostly as is, which is nice. And it also means I don't accidentally flash my desktop to you and things like that as well, or you know my banking details or something else that I have open. Which is, that's pretty cool as well. Um, uh, I'm, uh, what have we got here? I want to say hi to Alex, he's in Russia. Oh, Russia! Where are we? 6am! Oh, good morning. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what have we got here? Tyler, any funny stories of things going wrong when implementing different effects or weapons items? Um, yeah, I've, I've had a few moments where I've just set intervals to the wrong thing, so I send out about 5,000 shots in all different directions and things like that. I did have the um, the homing bullets that we got at the moment, and they um, ended up just homing into the totally inappropriate thing, so I set <laughs> setting my distance detection totally wrong, you know, greater than instead of less than, so I ended up home for the furthest away enemy on the on the map as opposed to the one that was closest, so that was pretty useful. Um, nothing sort of super extraordinary, um, but yeah, just the sort of usual stuff, you know, you set intervals wrong and you end up just like spawning far too many blood particles and far too many sound effects when you go to attack and things like that so but um i'm sure there'll be some very amusing things coming forth at least anyway yeah hopefully um your screen capture will be on and we get some good yes stuff. yeah that's it or i'll be on live stream and we'll, we'll ruin everything <laughs> <laughs> what else we got here uh you guys are awesome love your videos oh thank you very much thank you. kirk in seattle 8 p.m see that actually works out all right that's not too bad in terms of timing so yeah. So yeah, like I said, we'll have to play around with what timing works and that sort of jazz, um, as well, yeah. but yeah. Alright, um, I reckon we're going to take a bit of a break at the moment, we're going to get something to eat, and we will return, but it, um, yeah, we will probably won't be back for long after that, but we're going to pop it on break now. Yeah. Back in a bit. Alright, bye guys.
Alright, we're back. Hello everyone. Hello again. Okay, so I was thinking I might actually do some more pixel art now because I really should. Well, I've got lots of things to do. I could be implementing the actual lightning effect with the explosion, but I think I've been enjoying doing the art right now, so I'm going to jump on to something else. So, what have we got? I'm thinking I might go... for... I really should do that crossbow bolt. We've been to do that for ages, and the shotgun pellet while I'm there as well. So I'll do a little bit of projectile sort of work here. So there's my bullets folder. These are the bullets that I've currently got. Many frames which aren't being used. This is kind of a mess, this sprite sheet. But I've got different size ones for different sort of guns that we've got available. All the guns in Commandment, it's all sort of like, like 1900s type deal so you do have like double and single action revolvers but you don't have like you know an m16 or anything like that so that's the little pistol one there that's the shotgun one which i have since swapped for the pistol in the actual engine because it seemed to work out better and that's the rifle which um all these as well in the actual game engine they start squashed and stretch out the further they travel so the rifle bullet ends up being about sort of twice as long as it is pictured here by the time it's sort of traveled the length of the screen so anyway let's jump in and i'm going to start with the crossbow first and i'm gonna see if i can work out how i want to do this because i think i do want a certain amount of sort of squash and stretch on him and i'll probably also do that in the engine as well sort of after the fact squashing and stretching the sprite but I think I want that in the actual animation too so um, I'm not sure if I want to have any sort of trail on it like this um, in, you know like an air trail or anything like that or if I want to do that with particle effects at a later date and have sort of particles trailing behind the actual projectile but let's give it a try um, first of all let me load up my palette here because I don't actually have it loaded for some reason primary palette there we go okay so now I'll make a new animation here, and we'll call it Crossbow Bolt. And we'll just go for, oh look, we'll go for a couple of frames to start with, and there is no real set length on how long I want this to be. Um, I probably do want them to be quite a large, sort of oversized, almost novelty arrow, or bolt, or quarrel, or whatever you want to call it, because that um, does tend to sort of read better and it's kind of suits the style of the game we've got at the moment it's not like super realistic it's all a bit silly but let's get going with just a basic sort of crossbow bolt type shape to start with and then maybe we can see what we want to do from there because I'm not really sure so We'll start with something now. Do I want the shaft two pixels thick? I might be getting a bit too silly, actually. Let's go one pixel thick to start with. Let's make him really quite stumpy. And let's work on the actual arrow head. I'll just pick a normal sort of grey for him to start with. And I just want to see if I can get the shape first before I actually go on to shading and anything like that. So... Castlevania Symphony of Nine. Oh, thank you. That's quite the compliment, actually. I think that's quite a good-looking game. The um, there will be a lot more sort of lighting effects and um, general sort of uh, fanciness and particles and all that sort of thing over the top. And the so it's not re totally representative like the color palette that we've got now. You can imagine like similar to what we've got, but with a lot more sort of um, like colored lighting and sort of more dynamic lighting scattered around because at the moment there's basically there's no lighting on it everything's quite flat so everything tends to look quite brown and sort of tan and grays and things like that but by the time we add all the lighting effects on we should be looking pretty good now i'll chuck a bit of fletching on the back here and i think i'll probably just do it in a probably just a lightish sort of yellow color at the moment just so i can see it on this white background and i want to see if i can just work out exactly what i want in terms of how we're gonna look here uh, I mean like we're probably gonna have to go white for this mm, it's a problem with this size 
Is this gonna get a bit awkward? Because I want... Because if we're going just a small little head like that, then that's sort of getting to the point where you don't have enough actual resolution to have a proper arrowhead on here. So you really want this to be sort of getting into that kind of size. But then as soon as you've got the arrowhead that size, then the rest of the arrow starts to look like it's tiny. If you extend the shaft out, then this is going to start looking ridiculous. And it also means that then the shaft is... Oh, the tip of the arrow is two pixels fat, which in terms of pixel art just translates to it being a stubby sort of arrow. So you really have to go up to another one for the shaft. And this is the sort of problem I have with things of this size. And now the arrow looks like it's about 10 meters thick. So, so let me just undo everything there. So I'm just going to experiment here for a bit and see if I can come up with something that looks all right. That um, Keeping in mind that this is always going to be in motion. So it needs to basically just read as an arrow. It doesn't have to look, you know, super realistic like an arrow actually does or a quarrel or whatever you want to call it but i don't i don't mind that sort of general arrowhead on him and i think the fletching could be all right like that too i might even extend that out to double might work if i actually put some shading on it and things like that but let's just see if i can work out a bit of squash and stretch for him and I'll see if I like the overall animation that we get to start with. And then, if I do, then I'll go through and show him. Yes, Just Make Game is online! Hello! <laughs> we are going to be live streaming um, more often now because we actually have the internet to do it. That's why we got blessed with the NBN, the National Broadband Network. So we actually have a proper upload strength that competes with, like, you know, at least sort of most of the world so we've got a couple of I think it's like 15 20 um, megabits up now as opposed to we used to have about one on our ADSL which was nuts even though those 10 minute just make game videos took about an hour and a half to upload but thankfully now we can actually do things like this which is what we wanted to do all along so let me Start them out real stumpy like that. So yeah, like I'm saying, I'm just trying to go through here and see if just kind of prototype what I want this to to do. Because I really don't have anything in mind. I'm kind of just winging it. So I always start with just basic shapes first and then decide from there I'm kind of just, just going for like a basic stretch it's probably getting too wide there so I might keep that stumpy But yes, I'm definitely not sure what I, what I want to do with the actual um, particle effects or anything with this either. Because these need to be very visible, obviously, being a projectile. Because it's not only your projectile, there'll probably be an enemy or two that has a crossbow or an arrow. Or an arrow or something like that. So I need to pick out something that's nice and visible. Jeremy plans are released for Commandment or Bannerman for consoles. So you use the editors like Unity to make pointing the consoles easy. Uh, yeah, um, probably not for Bannerman, because it's really not worth, um, time doing it and that sort of thing. The sort of, the market of, for Bannerman is like, you know, it's a pretty niche little product, so there's probably not a huge amount of point in going towards consoles for that and that sort of jazz. Um, yeah, Bannerman will most likely, will be trying to, at least, um, depending on how it goes and that sort of jazz and what's going on, um, porting for the consoles that we can easily port to from Game Maker, which is quite a few from memory. Um, but it doesn't, I believe even Game Maker 2's got support for the Switch and things like that now, so we might even be able to actually port the whole thing over to Game Maker 2 after release and possibly then port it to Switch if needed. But, um, the main thing with consoles is just their, 
um, their sort of compliance and that sort of jazz, it can be really quite painful. Um, try to comply with everything that they require of you for you to have the privilege of uploading your game to sell it. Yeah, especially when there's just two of you. Yeah, yeah, especially with, yeah, like, that's the thing, it's like, with just two of us, it's like, that's the, that's the deal with, like, with Bannerman, it's like, it's like, right, I could spend time porting this to, to different things, or, like, you know, I could basically spend the time on making another game instead, that sort of deal. Oh, hey, Vin, how you doing? I'm just going to chuck a background layer on here so I can actually kind of see what I'm doing to see if I like what's going on with the actual shape of this or if I hate it and I want to start with something else. So, let me just chuck a dark blue or something like that. Bump, bump, bump. Oh, that's a horrible colour, isn't it? Uh, let me pick another one. Yeah, nice dark blue. Big fan of the dark blue for the background. Bump, 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 bump. There we go. 11.30 in Montreal. Yeah, see, I've been, it's, I've been collecting times for everyone. We're going to decide when we want to be doing the um, the stream in the future. And and that sort of thing. But, um, yeah, it's like, so collecting times for everybody and seeing what works best. And, you know, if we need to stay up late or if we need to get up at 5 a.m. and start going if we want to stream, you know, what works out. Yeah, up working on your game too. That's actually, that's excellent, buddy. I'm glad to hear it. Those late nights is where all the fun re <laughs> resides. <laughs> alright, what have I got here? I just did a basic stretch. Let's see if that's any good. Ah, oh, it's alright. I can see, yeah, I think I might go with something like that for it. Probably work on that a bit, but that kind of works. Give it a bit of motion and... It still looks relatively pointy by the time it's done. You could probably stretch it out even more, to be honest. So, that one there. Yeah, that's not too bad, that. Of course, I will... I just realised... I do move... the front of this arrow, or coral, or whatever you want to call it, and I really shouldn't do that from an actual implementation sort of thing. Yes! Yes, I've, we've been meaning to. It's, um, we're sort of stuck in our ways right now. I have played around with it before. Um, it is very good. But I know, I know, I know. But it's just kind of like we've got everything in these formats right now. And I think it's going to end up being like next project that we end up swapping over from Pixel Edit. Unless we go crazy in our next projects in 3D. Oh, yeah. That's always an option. <laughs> yeah, I reckon. Okay, so let me just make sure that I've got the arrowheads. Where I need them. These ones. Just from like a uh, putting it in the game sort of perspective here, in that I don't want anything like the head of the arrow moving, because if I do that in the actual game, it's gonna throw collision out most likely. So and it's gonna just generally look weird. It's gonna tend to sort of accelerate strangely, and I wanna have Full control over the acceleration for everything when I actually pop it in the engine myself and I don't want it being reliant on the sprites movement so let me just chuck everything where it should be and let's see if I like this it doesn't have to be particularly great at the moment I'll just add a bit of just has to be something better than what we've currently got which is a bullet from a crossbow so 
I'll just whip something up quickly so I've got something there that I can use in the future and then I can build off it as well. Bang. That's not too bad. It definitely goes. Add a couple of particle effects, add a bit of shading and things like that to it and you're, you're laughing, you're laughing. So I might actually sort of more or less go with that at the moment and I'm going to just quickly shade him up while I'm here. Let's do very simple shading on him. I mean, he is a flying bullet that's going to just come hurtling past you. Thank you. It's really quite rough, but um, but it'll probably do the job for the moment. I'll just quickly touch him up a bit, but yeah, it's this is more about getting something in there that's sort of roughly appropriate for what it should be, um, rather than just me continually putting it off and not having anything for it at all, because that's what I've been doing lately, and I've just been content with it to fire bullets. Uh, maybe I should go to the flip sheet. It should be that light blue. That's quite nice, actually. Alright, let's have a little look. What do we got? That's alright. It's okay for the moment. Obviously, I need to do something with the shaft here as well. But he kind of looks like he's going fast. That's the other bullets for comparison here. So, yeah. I definitely don't want the head being any bigger than what we've currently got there, because... Especially the rifle is probably a good example. By the time I put actually stuff around it, so... Because um, potentially, yeah, either some sort of animation like this or, yeah, particles underneath to give it that sort of movement bear type look. So, you know, I can't... So, just so you know, I can't tell you how many hours I probably painted at work listening to the Mountain from the Batman and the official soundtrack. Ah, oh, thank you very much. Um, I'm very happy with how the soundtrack came out for Batman altogether, I must admit. It's kind of like we made a game but also made an album at the same time which is kind of cool because that's always something i've wanted to do so i kind of got to do both at the same time right, let me just save that and export that one quickly and that can do as that placeholder little crossbow bolt not going to spend too much time on him at the moment sprites So let's go. Uh, crossbow projectile. I don't know why I haven't gotten around to doing the crossbow yet. I've done projectiles for all the other thrown weapons and everything, but you anyway. know. Hey, thanks, Finn. Thanks a lot. Yeah, I'm really happy with how it came out. 
Uh, crossbow projectile. No, no, just chuck that in there. Bonk. Great. And now, yes, I need to do something with the shotgun as well, because the shotgun projectiles look ridiculous at the moment. Um, I think it is due to the fact they've got big trails on them and things like that, and it just kind of doesn't look quite right, because they do tend to shoot out, not just... Hey, you've got your, your fella here and you're firing straight. They don't just shoot out in a straight line like every other projectile, because they do get the sort of inherent inaccuracy of a shotgun, so you shoot out different angles like that, and it does look a bit strange with them all... Um, either way I do it, I can either have the projectiles having the angle that they're getting shot out at, or I can maintain the angle of what you are aiming at, and no matter what I do, it just doesn't end up looking out right, so... Um, I think I might end up going for the, the old, um, sort of bubble bullet type thing, you know, from, um, the various games like Metal Slug and things like that. Um, so, for the shotguns themselves, and possibly end up using them for other things in the game too. Different sort of magical attacks and enemy attacks, but, um, yeah, just a big round bullet. Um, bit of animation on him, probably make him look a bit fiery, and that will probably pretty much do us. And what have we got here? We've got a couple of questions in here. You started on Bandaman and Game Maker. How many hours do you say you put into learning the tool before making the commitment into building a full game? Um, not a huge amount, actually. Like, in the grand scheme of things, I think, like, because I've, because I've, I've made games before in the past, I know it's very different from, like, the 3D sort of stuff I was using, but it really is pretty easy to get grips, um, get to grips with where everything is. It's more just about learning the sort of specific quirks to whatever, um, sort of engine that you're using so it's basically like I, I remember like with game maker i'm like right where do i actually put my like where can i write my functions my bits of code i'm like where can i put them and you know it took me a while to work out that in game maker that's called scripts and they're in a folder and you have to go create script and things like that you know i'm like i just want to call a function that I, that I write myself where can i do that um outside of like an actual object but you know in game maker they put it in this little folder over there as opposed to um in the sort of Quake engine, it's like you literally just write a file with whatever script you want in it and just include it in the compiler and it compiles it. But, you know, things like that, with, like, once you learn where they are, it's pretty good, and then you start learning the, um, like, the general sort of, um, like, functions, inbuilt functions and things like that, and it's, they're all pretty similar, like, they really are. It's sort of, like, I imagine it could jump to Unity. I've never really touched Unity at all in sort of recent memory, and I imagine it wouldn't take long to get used to that either. It's all pretty quick. Uh, I'm sure with all this effort you put in, the game shall pay you in the future. Thank you very much. So they're paying us now. They're just not paying us very much. But hopefully, <laughs> um, yeah, hopefully it will work out in the future. And we'll be able to just, I just want to be able to keep doing this, basically. But my, my ideal situation would be, um, you know, actually got enough money that you can just keep going. And, like, then you don't even have to give a thought as to what the games you're making are going to be profitable or not. You can just make a bunch of weird stuff. And that would be awesome. Uh, no, I have in the past, um, Lucas, but not, um, not at, at any sort of thorough way at all, I must admit. Like, I've kind of looked at it and gone, oh yeah, and then just, that's it. <laughs> like, um, I know there are quite a few people using it these days. And there's been some pretty cool stuff made in it. Alright, let's have a look at this shotgun. So yeah, I think I might go the little ball projectile for this one. I'll just give it a couple of frames because we won't really need much. Um, I'll just copy over one of these. So I've got the colours right there, so I have to jump across the palette and I can just go straight into it. And I'll start with the orange, much like I did when I was doing the explosion earlier. I'll just go for the sort of middle colour first. Um, so I'll work out how big I want it. I suppose I don't want it as big as the existing bullets because that's pretty much precisely the problem so I might go really quite dinky with it maybe something like that Boom. so I suppose actually maybe I should start with the darker one and just make him too bigger Boom. bada bing all right so let's work out exactly what I want to be doing on the inside of this one here so I might want to, actually what I might do is I might do him up like I'd do a candle or a fireplace in that the fire, like the heat rises from the, from the bottom upwards and I might quickly animate that 
and then I can just flip him around and have it whatever direction he's facing. He doesn't have a tail, but the actual internal ball, the little sort of fireball itself has like fire that moves around in the direction that you're flying might end up working out okay. And the easiest way for me to do that is to just flip him around. And I'm kind of thinking, do I want to have... Because I probably do want to go down to orange for the outside here. So I might just extend the size of my little ball out here as well. Perhaps. But now I might get in a little problem with it being too big again, but. Oh, that's a problem for future, Michael. <laughs> I suppose I don't want him. Top one like that. That is pretty big, actually. Ah, Vin, no, Haley. Haley did not have any training in games development before this at all. We actually talked about this um a bit earlier around, but it's um Haley is sort of like yeah, it's been kind of she's seen me go at it before, um, and sort of like helped out in terms of listening to <laughs> to my problems when I win John, but um no, this is this is the first time jumping in properly. Yeah. yeah. Um. <coughs> I am, of course, no good at um, code. <laughs> um, I did a tiny little bit of pixel art before I started making the assets for the game, which is why some of the first assets I made look absolutely shocking. Um, yeah, but otherwise, no other experience in making games, just kind of, yeah, watching and listening to, to what Mike was doing. But um, I love it. I want to keep doing it. It's awesome fun. Yeah, it really is. It really is quite a fun job, to be yeah. honest. Like, especially working with yourself, I imagine, um, probably starts to lose a bit of its shine when you're doing something for someone who's very silly. <laughs> yeah, Haley's. Yeah, like Haley, I think really is benefiting from um, yeah, bringing in sort of actual art techniques into this. Like, I don't have any sort of <laughs> yeah, like that's. Uh, like, I don't really have any sort of art training type thing, apart from, like, graphic design, which is very different. Um, more layout and things like that. But, yeah, it's been... It's been good. You'd, like, like come up to speed really fast, though. Like... Um, I do want to keep learning as well. Um, I'd really like to be able to start doing some code and stuff. Mm. And Mike is teaching me bits and pieces along the way. So, I guess that's probably a bit of a goal for me in the future. So I can um, help out with that stuff more as well. Yeah, that's it. Like, it's just, we're kind of like, as every time we do something, we do something slightly different. So, like, it's, it's always what I do with my, when I'm making games and things like that too. It's just, um, it's, I always try to do something a, a little bit different each time around. So I learn something along the way. Like, I've never done anything with, like, procedural generation before, um, before this. And then I spent, you know, a good couple of weeks going, how the hell am I going to do any of this? Um, and, like, yeah, that was pretty fun, actually, trying to learn, like, you know, a little bit about, you know, how that all works. And that's a that's an entirely big, messy sort of field of study and thought, that. And it's like... Yeah, yeah, learning code. Yeah, exactly. Like, it's... It's, yeah, it's it's a real thing. And I, I've got, like, a real problem with a lot of people. There's a lot of people out there that try to, like, gatekeep a lot of this sort of thing. So they sort of, like, yeah, they like to sort of keep people where they are so they don't have to, um, they don't sort of move around to other disciplines and things like that. And I'm like, it's really, yeah, it's, it's all about just learning and sort of iterating and keep going around, so. That's like, even before Bannerman, I'd done very little in the way of pixel art. I learned most of my pixel art by working on that, really. Yeah. Like, I'd done little bits and pieces and kind of buggered around, but I'd never made a game with pixel art before, so. Yeah, exactly, exactly, yeah. It's just, just sort of working it out as you go. You go, how am I going to fix this problem? I've got a problem here, how am I going to fix it? Dunno, I'll just keep trying stuff until something works. 
If it doesn't work, then I'll just come back again tomorrow and try harder. Actually, that's something that I love too about um, like the programming side of making a game is I really like problem solving stuff. And like at the moment, I can help with that kind of thing by like talking through stuff with Mike and being like maybe we can make it do this but then he's the one that actually has to go in and and make that work in the game so it'll be cool if I can start to kind of play around with some of that stuff myself too yeah yeah I really like the problem solving aspect of it yeah yeah it is quite fun isn't yeah, it it's like really I think it's the best bit Alright, I think this is sort of looking okay at the moment. I might just give him another another frame or two. Let's see what we're getting back to. I kind of want to do want him to loop okay. Yeah, yeah, that's it. It's like, yeah. It's like, yeah, you got, no matter how many people you got, you just sit there going, what are we going to do about this? It's like, oh, oh my god, nothing we try works. It's like, alright, maybe we can do insert strange thing. Maybe we can get old mate to redo the whole engine again for us. <laughs> um, that actually loops pretty well as is, so I might just leave them like that and see if I can just have a look at three frames and then see how well it looks and touch up the rest of it. Well, okay, that's not bad. All right, cool. So I'm just going to do the outside of him as well and probably make him pulse a little bit or something like that. And then that might be all right for our shotgun projectiles, which would be quite nice. Yeah, that's not too bad, that. I actually don't mind that at all. Maybe I can give him a little bit of a tail, he says, saying that he didn't want a tail on it at all. No, I'm going to resist the urge. I'm going to resist the urge. Alright, I might just uh, speculate with the colours here a little bit. I'm one of those people that doesn't really like outlines on pixel art, so like, even though I've outlined all these shots and, um, before, I just, I'm, I really don't like outlined pixel art, I prefer it when it's just sort of standalone and doesn't have the big black or, like, it's, it's alright when it's, it's, when it's not black, I suppose, but it's like the, the big cliches, everyone draws like, pixel art figure and then outlines them in black, and I think, always think that generally doesn't look all that great, so this outline on here is actually bothering me quite a bit. But maybe I should just get over it. <laughs> Alright, so I've got that one there. Yes, exactly. Thank you very much. It's like, I don't know, I know it is quite like the sort of, like there is like a distinct choice to make here too, like, um, like there, there are some games with outlines that do look pretty great, but I oh, just, just don't like it. <laughs> That's my favourite video game. I really like Deus Ex, um, the original, and I, I'm a big fan of System Shock 2 as well. Um, that sort of immersive sim, as they call them these days, um, really does appeal to me. I really quite enjoy those games, and anything similar as well. That includes the sort of the new Deus Ex I really do quite enjoy, and um, even games like Alpha Protocol, which was... Um, yeah, sort of like a much maligned spy game thing that was kind of a bit buggy, but it, I feel like it got, a, it got an unfair rap. I think it was actually really quite good. What's your favourite game, Haley? You can't say Dare to Dream again. <laughs> I, I want to stick with American McGee's Alice. Alice? Yeah. Yep. It was on the Quake 3 engine, I think. Yeah! It was a really good game. Yes, America's Geese Alice. Did you end up? Did you end up playing the new one at all? No. The sequel to it? No. Not new. It's probably like Never eight did. years old now. Yeah. But <laughs> um, no, I really should. Yeah, I remember. I think I think we did own it at some point. But um, yes, yes, Warrior Inspector's video is fantastic, actually.
Um, but yeah, I think we, I swear we own it, but we, maybe it wasn't that good. We just stopped playing about halfway through, which tends to happen quite a lot. <laughs> I, I, I do yeah, remember it. Yeah, like, yeah. Maybe we just blocked it out. Oh, E3. What are we looking forward to at E3? I'm, can, I, can I say I'm not really looking forward to E3? <laughs> I mean, it's alright, it's all I guess. I don't know. It's not my... It doesn't really get me pumping, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't know. I'm not even sure what's coming out this E3. I'd like to see a bit of Cyberpunk. Yeah. That'd be nice, but... I. Um, that's probably the main thing I'm looking forward to at the moment. That looks fantastic. I've got, um, high, high confidence. Uh, it's just, I don't know, I, I don't like the sort of hype culture around, um, everything at the moment. It's like, yeah, I don't know, I just, it's basically like a big advert that everyone goes along to and they're like, wow, well, advertise to me, and I'm just like, yeah, okay. <laughs> hello, hello, Shatley. Shatley, is that the right? Shatley, Hello. Pathologics coming soon. Oh yeah, that's right. That's it. Like out tomorrow. Uh, we upload the full live stream. Uh, we will. Yes, whole thing will be going up uh, on the channel after we finish streaming here. Um, YouTube will chuck it up automatically for me. I don't know. I reckon I'm pretty happy with that for just the little ball animation for the shotgun for the moment i think that's much better than what i've got in there at the moment anyway so bang bang he's done i'm just gonna get rid of him and move on to the next thing because i could spend ages sitting here and i'm just not going to so let me save him now Steve, what else is on my list to do today? Oh, God. Barrier. Oh, that'll be an interesting one to attempt. Okay, so there is a there is a special uh, ability or a spell, if you like, whichever one works. They're basically the same thing. Um, that summons a barrier in front of you. So um, I want that to... It's a destructible barrier and it sort of fades out over time as well. Like a big magic barrier that blocks attacks and movement. So it acts like a wall. So I ideally want this to be about the size of a wall, and I want it to have the same proportions and everything as the wall that we've currently got, but look all magical or something. So I'm obviously going to have to apply lots of glow effects to it and things like that, um, but no, let's give that a little bit of a go. A few things that, that are really interesting to me is how both Deus Ex and Thief games are not considered fun very late into production. The last two, three months of polish made a huge difference. Yeah, I can like, I can totally believe that though. I can... Cause just because of like how sort of heavy they are in the mechanics it's just i can understand people just obsessing over each little mechanic despite the fact that that mechanic mightn't be any fun at all i mean i've i've never done anything like that no <laughs> <laughs> um yeah it's it's sort of it's very easy to sort of um get a little bit too caught up in like specifics of, of mechanics and things like that and then without taking a step back and going maybe just getting rid of that specific bit in general might be a better choice and actually make it more fun i'm pretty sure they did that with deus ex did they not like wasn't there a specific um i want to feel like there was an actual a specific mechanic that they ended up just binning totally because it didn't work or perhaps i am thinking of thief but yeah it's from it's from the same talk i believe i know they did have a giant level that didn't work out Okay, what was I doing? A double A triple A is that fun until the last three six months? Yeah. <laughs> All right, I might just open up my uh, some of the tile set here just so I can get a bit of a reference to. It. So, I've got tile sets. Let me just open one of these up. So I've got a bit of a reference for what I'm doing for this magic wall thing because I don't even know what I want it to look like, to be honest. Okay, let's just open a basic tile set, I suppose. 
not that one. Possibly that one. Magic bricks in a magic wall, perhaps? Maybe. Yeah. Maybe. Glowy bricks. Glowy bricks. Good way. Hello, Frank. How are you today? I need to yeah. So what do we got? That's thirty-two by thirty-two there. Okay, so 32 by 32, and then we do a half height wall. Yes, okay. Well, let me just see if I can block something out that might look alright. Um, not really too sure, to be honest. So, I might go 64 by 64. I got a researching rotoscoping of Prince of Persia and found my channel that way a while back. Yes, a lot of people found my channel through that rotoscoping video. Um, I love rotoscoping, I think it's fantastic. I still think, um, like everyone, everyone loves another world or out of this world, and that's always their favourite. But my favourite's Flashback, same studio, but um, I, I absolutely love that game. I think it's fantastic. That'd be pretty high up on my list of games, to be honest. But I always kind of forget about it, <laughs> probably because towards the end it gets so difficult that I, I don't think I've ever really finished it. Maybe finished it once. <laughs> Are you rotoscoping, Vin? Yes! <laughs> Jump on that rotoscope train! <laughs> yeah, yeah, there was a DOS version for it as well, which I, I think was really weird, because it gave the main character, Conrad, he had a pink shirt in the DOS one. Something to do with their palette the, and the colours they used for transparency or something, so they couldn't just, um, yeah, instead of giving him a white shirt, they gave him a pink shirt. Or a red, red shirt. Which always looked weird to me, because I came from the Mega Drive um, version. But I had, yeah, I had both. <laughs> Alright, so if I want to do a full size thing here, I might actually just switch over to Bannerman and have a proper look at exactly what it looks like when. Oh, Bannerman Commandment. Jeez. Yeah, it's just so smooth. Like, yeah, that's the best thing about rotoscoping. It just comes out ridiculously smooth. Oh, go away. Let me just get rid of these idiots. Okay. So let's see if I can find an individual single wall. They do spawn. Go away. Oh yeah, I, I would definitely do rotoscoping again. I don't. I have nothing. I'm not like totally sick of it or anything like that. Um. Yeah, I, I think it's quite a, a fun way to work. It's just, um, I'd probably, I'd do certain things. Oh my god. I'd see, do certain things a little bit smarter um, next time around. Like some of the some of the ways I was working and uh, certain things I was doing was just um, like really not the best way to go about it. But that's because I didn't really know what I was doing when I started. I kind of just made it up as I went along. Yeah, never rotoscoped anything before. Yeah, I'd never rotoscoped before. I knew about it. I knew how it worked um, and I was sort of familiar with it. But um, I'd never done it, and I'd certainly never done it in like a, you know, like a uh, low pixel uh, resolution sort of way either. So <laughs> the vision cones, yeah, <laughs> yeah, they're a bit full on. I'm just gonna see if I can find a single, just a single wall that's spawned on its own. Oh, thank you. Yeah, no, it's it's really fun to do actually. Rotoscoping is really good. Um, like it's it's amazing too. Like I learnt a lot. Um, sort of when I was doing uh, rotoscoping for Bannerman early on. Like I would I would have to rotoscope basically every frame. I was like, oh no, you all right, I've got to stick with what I got. And if I didn't, if I needed a specific animation, I didn't take any footage of it. I'd go and take more footage. And towards the end of the game, I I sort of rotoscoped most of it. But then like. I'd be like, oh, he needs to take a step while, you know, attacking, and I forgot to, you know, film that bit. I'd just draw it. So I sort of, I learnt more about um, animation through doing that as well. Which was really cool. Like, it's just, I guess, just volume of work, you know what I mean? So. And just sort of, yeah, being exposed to animation a bit more. 
and having to look so closely at it that I actually sort of picked up how to animate without reference footage and things like that. Um, let's have a look. Do we have one that spawned? No, it doesn't look like we really did. The closest we got is a 1x2 wall, which is okay, I suppose. Because I'm thinking for this for this wall here, we do want to have... So we want to have the front, because as we, as we do in this, we've got the actual... The front of the wall draws, and then we draw the top of the wall. And then after that, we draw basically like a quarter height wall here, so you can go behind it, like a half height wall. And then it has a what I call an end cap on it. So if I was doing like a magic wall, I'd basically need to do the front of the wall, the top, and then the end cap. Um, all in one sort of thing. And then that would pl plop in anywhere that you can plop in a wall. So it could fit right here, for example, and you could block that off until it despawns or gets down, um, destroyed or anything like that. But that should work out pretty well. I have to remember to give it its shadow too in the same method as the walls currently have. But yeah, I reckon I might go magic bricks or something might work for that. Um, yeah, alright. Let's give it a go. So I'll do 32 and then another 32 for the height and then I suppose it's another 16 above that for the end. That seems too big, but we'll try it. That's the thing with this perspective. Everything seems too big. Back to pixel edit. So I might, I might just draw this on like just a blank canvas here without the tiles everywhere. And I might import our little player character, just so I've got a bit of reference. There he is. And I'll pinch that wall just for the fun of it as well. Pop in there. I said it is a two height wall, I believe. Hang on one second. I'm confusing myself now. So if it's a one height wall, is it just like that? Perhaps it is. Yeah. Yeah, they're that stumpy though. I thought they were a bit bigger. Let's well, see. This is the problem. I haven't been looking at tile sets for a long time, so now I can't remember how big we actually do everything. I reckon, yeah, well, I'm gonna have to go like that, aren't I? Looks a bit weird. But then the actual collision for this will be only small. It'll only be 16. It's like that. Because you can. Oh, wait, no, it won't. It'll actually it'll come all the way down there, won't it? Okay, so that is 32 by 32. Don't mind me, I don't know what I'm doing. Uh, what's the deal with the live streams? Once a week, random when you can. Um, I'd like to do once a week, to be honest, would be great. Um, this is like just our test, so we're not really sure what works, and we'll, we'll have to obviously pick a time that's a bit better suited. But um, well, it obviously seems to work. I don't think anyone's had any problems with the stream so far, or with our upload speed or anything like that. So that's pretty ace. Um, and it seems like everyone can hear me. Um, I know Haley is kind of hard to hear without a mic, but um, we'll. We'll, we'll work something out. I mean, that'll be fun hooking up a separate, a separate mic, but, um, but yeah, everything seems to work okay, and OBS, I seem to have got my head around OBS and switching around and things like that, so, I know, normal internet, so nice, it's like the best thing. I'm just so happy about it. Speaking of, how long have we been going for now? Two and a half hours! Bloody hell! That's quite a test. Well, Okay. Uh, 
Okay, so let's open up our pellets. Oh, I don't want any of those. My other pellets. Don't want any of that either. Intro pellet, that's what I want, because it's pretty. Alright, I'll make another layer for my magic wall here, and then perhaps we'll go with the whole brickwork thing, maybe? I don't know, we'll try it. See what works, see what works, see what doesn't. I wonder if I should make them all irregular like the bricks that we actually do have. <laughs> that's uh, that's the ultimate dream. Sit there watching a live stream at work. Good on you. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Let's go. Let's go the bigger regular bricks like what we've got in the actual walls. Something like that. This color combination. I do apologize for this. This hurts. <laughs> There we go. Fuck <laughs> you. Know. With my favourite colour combination. <laughs> Blue and red. Yeah. So sorry. Took me a moment to realise what the hell I'm <laughs> doing there. Hey, you're working at home. Nice. That's living the dream. What do you do for work then? I love working at home. That's the best thing about working on games. Working from home. What well, is for me at least anyway. I love it. Uh, let's go right about there for him. Software engineer and web dev, you're not that far off, are you? That's basically the same sort of thing. <coughs> it's pretty much games. Mostly games. Just make sort of game. Alright, there's my magic wall. It's okay. Let's change this over here. Oh, I did half that on the wrong layer, didn't I? <laughs> uh, I think it's about time for a coffee when I start doing things like this. Let's get in the coffee time now. Hated freelancing. <laughs> I've seen, I've always, yeah, I've always actually, um, enjoyed um sort of freelancing and working from home as well because I, I used to do that for like graphic design I, i've done both i mean i worked in a studio but i also um worked from home as as a freelancer for quite a while and that actually that really wasn't too bad i quite enjoyed that i think that's where i got a bit of a taste for this from and i sort of like imagine if i could just do this all the time Yes, the making games full-time dream. Love it. You want to work for yourself or do you want to work for a studio? Yes, it's it's it kind of easy to turn into a hermit if you're just working from home and you, you don't see anyone apart from yourself. Um, I mean, I kind of did that on Bannerman. I meant a little bit special towards the end there. Um, because I was just... Um, sort of locked in my own little world like own games work for yourself well good luck buddy i hope it works out that is the ultimate dream ah uh, let's go yeah let's try that i suppose companies are quite scary uh, let's go with that I think I'm just gonna make it in the same manner as our current walls but we're gonna make it in a bright blue and then I think I'll run a thank you and then I think I'll run a, a um, sort of glowing 
um, sprite around the entire thing that pulses, I reckon might be the way to go. Hey, no worries, Kirk. It's always weird. People call us an inspiration a lot, and I'm kind of like, yeah, right, I suppose. It's really nice. <laughs> it is quite nice. Yeah, so I think I'll run a just a glowing uh, pass around the whole thing, but I'll start shading the, the walls, I guess. I guess I should go for the whole broken brick vibe that we've got as well, so I might as well do that and start taking a couple out. Because it's not like this is going to be tiling at all, so... Might do a couple of cracks and things like that, you know. And maybe those can end up glowing towards the end as well. Like, yeah, like I said, I'm just kind of making this up as I go for this one. I have nothing in mind. I just know I've got to make a barrier, so I've got to come up with something. I thought a wall makes sense, and it works with our sort of grid system that we've got, because... Because the way our, like, levels generate, it's all, you know, it's all based on a grid that then the, um the tiles get sort of slotted into so anything that helps with that is a big bonus do you think web games are a viable alternative to steam i must admit i know nothing about like what they it's even happening in that sort of like realm anymore like my like my last experience of like sort of web games in any like capacity was back when like new grounds was like a big sort of deal i know new ground still exists and things like Congregate still exist, but I don't know how anything works these days with it, or especially with um, pricing on them. And um, I imagine it's probably gone somewhat like um, like mobile. I imagine in-app purchases or something, but I've, I've got nothing. That's just me taking a guess. Yeah, I think... Um, hmm. Yeah, I think we're going to see a lot of, um, sort of indie, um, indie, sort of mid-indie, I guess you'd call them, um, sort of developers hiring on at the moment. I mean, you've got quite a few of them, but it's not as many as you'd kind of expect. But, um, there's going to be more of them coming soon, that's for sure. Yeah, definitely. Well, you're 100% right, Vin. Like, yeah. That's, um, that's going to be definitely something that has to be kept an eye on. It's going to be interesting, that's for sure. Alright, so I believe in this I just did the highlights from the one before, or did I not? Yes. Cool, that makes sense, so... Became the body from the one before, done. So don't mind me, I'm just talking to myself. I'm trying to remember exactly the way I, I shaded these. I'm not going to stick around here for long, but I just want to say nice thumbnail you guys made. It's very <laughs> Thanks very much. <laughs> I got a good mileage out of that photo now. Yeah. Uh, how long did Bannerman take to make? Uh, well, let me check for you. I'm not even sure, but I'll have a look at how many episodes of Just Make Game I did. And that'll tell you. <laughs> how many did I do? 28 months. There you go. 28 episodes, 28 months. Although I'm pretty sure I missed a month out there, so you could probably go 29. But I don't think I was working on it for that month. I think we were away. 
Do you settle on the name game for your um, uh, for your game studio, Armitage Games? Um, I like Neuromancer, the book by um, William Gibson, and there's a character in that called Armitage. And I've always just kind of liked the name, so and that's this for ages, so I just kind of nicked it. <laughs> Alright, so oh, these are very dithery, these bricks, but that's the sort of style that we did for it. So I'm, like I said, I'm really not sure if this is going to work for the magic thing, I'm probably going to have to go something cleaner, but this is the sort of style that we've done for the actual tile sets in game, so, and it probably needs to look somewhat similar, I can't go too crazy with it. Easy. All right, next one up. Okay, last one up here. I have to work out how I want to do the end caps too. These are these bits. I call them end caps. I should probably explain exactly how I did my um, level generation at some point, shouldn't I? Because I keep calling things like end caps and I expect you guys to know what I mean by that. But you probably don't. You're sitting there going, what the hell are you talking about? <laughs> uh, let's get that one there. Bit of a shadow on that one. Shadow on there too. Okay, and now we've got the next way around. Claim Entertainment selected their name to be alphabetically above Activision. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. That's fantastic. <laughs> Alright, thank you very much. Good night. Good night. Um, That's clever. I well like it. Claim. Yeah, I like it. <laughs> Hardvark Games, yeah, get right at the top, that's right. Yeah, no, it's just, um, yeah, just Neuromancer. I, I really like William Gibson's, um, books in general, but it's, like, I read Neuromancer when I was in, I think I was in high school, and it's just, like, I can't even really tell you what the, um, what the plotline even is, because that's the kind of, like, like, it's a cyberpunk sort of nightmare 
future type thing but like it's been so long since i've actually read the thing I'm, i can tell you the name of the characters in it but i can't really tell you what's actually going on well i read it not that long ago and i'd struggle to tell you what's <laughs> going on <laughs> but that's the sort of writing style he has like he's got a he's got one book called pattern recognition and it's um like i read that not that long ago um really in the grand scheme of things and i couldn't tell you what happened in that i can tell you like yeah like what the main character wore and all that sort of thing and because that's the sort of writer he is he's all very descriptive and he's he's sort of like a kind of more building worlds and telling stories so much so yeah it's just one of those things that stuck with me and yeah i've always enjoyed my sort of cyberpunk stuff anyway so speaking of that looks like it should be a wall and some sort of cyberpunk nightmare game with an ega color palette i still want to do that I still want to do something with this color palette through the entire game where it's just horrendous blues and purples and lime greens and stuff like that. That'd be fantastic. Bit of magenta in there. Live a little, get a bit of magenta. <laughs> uh, I should probably really extend these up, shouldn't I? Now I look at that. Hyperlight Drifter. I did. I did. Love the art. I don't it wasn't like a huge fan of the gameplay really but that's like you know that's just kind of um i'm not that twitchy you know, you know what i mean so so that's like to be expected but i love the artwork for it and just the sort of like the general world design and everything was bloody fantastic i don't think i ever finished it i must admit it just wasn't good enough <laughs> getting get my ass kicked Uh, so we got a bit of a wall there. It's blue. Yeah, story little thing. Yeah, because it, it all did it sort of um, wordlessly, which is like pictographs and things like that. Which are, it's cool, and especially cool because you don't have to translate it. That's a, that's pretty sweet. But um, yeah, no, it was a bit sort of, you kind of like, what the hell's going on? I don't know, I've got a sword thing. I'm just going to run around and hit stuff. <laughs> the, one thing, the one thing I really didn't like was that you sort of... Um, I think I'm remembering this right, I'm going to make myself look like an idiot, but um, your sort of dash ability that you have, it really annoyed me that you, when you're mid-dash, you're not actually invincible to things. I'm pretty sure that's how that works. Like I said, I've probably made myself sound like an idiot. But um, yeah, that always annoyed me, because I'm, I'm sort of right into my Dark Souls type thing. I want my, my iframes in the middle of my dodge. <laughs> Like, yeah, you have to dodge, but you also have to actually pick the right direction, as in, like, not where something is. Um, you used to just dodge and straight through. <laughs> straight through projectiles and that sort of thing. <clears throat> Alright, so how am I going to do this here? Yeah, yeah, I agree, I agree. I think I did actually get up to that. Because I did play it quite a bit, um, despite not being particularly good at it. Um, but yeah, yeah, I agree. I'm like, that should have just been in there to start with. I like, I don't know, I feel like a lot of the, the sort of mechanics, I'm like, you can just have them from the start. I'm like, you don't really need that sort of progression there. Like, it doesn't really add that much. It's kind of like, just put it in to start with. Because I can't even tell you what some of the other abilities were. I mean, you just kind of get more stuff, don't you? <laughs> Alright, so let's have a look at these caps here. Okay, so we got our side caps. Top caps. Okay. Let's try it out. Sorry, I probably didn't do anything on the screen there. It's because I actually just jumped into Banner Man for two seconds to have a quick look and I didn't switch over in OBS. Oops. Okay, so we'll go to the top caps first. So these were the highlight the one above the highlight color okay. that's getting really right <sighs> layers <laughs> oh, I always do this to myself
I do. I do do that quite a lot, yes. Yeah. <laughs> or often I end up certain, like um, doing it in another colour and then changing it to that and go, oh, that looks great. I should just make something in this sort of like neon green. I don't know why I haven't done that yet. Why don't we just make things in neon green? Like magenta. Like really horrible cyans and stuff. I mean, I'm kind of doing it right now. I can't do the intro in it, I suppose. Uh, I do that when I'm animating. I pick really bright, contrasting colours mm. to, like, rock out the Oh, yeah, like, yeah, bright red torso, bright yeah. green head. Yeah, yeah. Alrighty. So we're getting there. Hey, thanks very much, Kirk. Absolute legend. I'm glad you're enjoying hey, it. Thank you. Oh, Jesus. The alert went off. Scared the shit out of me. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot I set those up. <laughs> thanks very much, Kirk. You successfully gave me a jump scare. <laughs> Top cap, top cap, going up the very top. Alright, oh, that goes there. It's starting to sort of look like a wall. It doesn't, it certainly doesn't look very magic, but <laughs> I guess I'll work on that. <laughs> That's. Yes, that's right, yeah. Um, I kind of nicked that from um, AGDG years ago. I used to go on there when I was like, God, university, I suppose. So like, ages and ages and ages ago. It's like, I ended up making, like, yeah, I was, I was, um, I was making Berserker Quest in their, like, old threads way back in the day. Alright, so let me just jump back in to Commandment again and just have a quick little look at how my walls actually do these little side cap bits because the easiest way to do it is just jump back in and look out. Oh, go away. I'm just gonna regenerate the levels so there's not a million guys around me. Okay, so we've got. That doesn't really help. Go away. Come on, okay. So we go wall on the. So we just go on the inside and we layer it over the top. Okay. Cool. And it matches how small that last brick is. Okay, 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 okay. Let me jump back. Pixel edit. Okay, so I need to make these bricks small. Like that. That one needs to come in as well. And I suppose I'll stretch that one out. Do. Yes, definitely controller friendly this one. Um, we kind of, I suppose it'll probably play like a bit of a twin stick um, on a controller, but yeah, sort of either WASD and mouse or 
twin stick controller should be all good for this. Simple menus, so that I'm not a big fan of like overly ridiculous um, like inventory screens and stuff, so there won't be any sort of difficult navigation. Well, I must admit, I do like a lot of games with really difficult, um, like, well, very complex um, inventory systems. I just don't like making them, I suppose. <laughs> it's probably the main thing. No, is any last indie game was UI? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I've just always kind of avoided it. I've just gone that. <laughs> Let's go, bang, 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 get these ones going. And then, just make sure I've got that right. Yeah, you just get the granite between. Yeah, I think I'm definitely going to have to make it pulse. And I think um, what I'm thinking for the, for the effect as well is I'm going to have almost like a lightning effect running through the actual grouting. So like I really um, probably go for the like the bright green or some, the bright purple and just have that running through the grouting sort of you know running into each other and kind of making little flashes and stuff to sort of sell it up a bit and probably make it pulse and you could probably make even um, you know certain parts of it sort of semi transparent so perhaps the the black grouting is kind of half see through or something like that might work. Yeah, inverting the black ones, yeah. Yeah, well, yeah, it's something I'll have to give it a go it might be cool or it might be totally crap so it's, it's all those things it's sort of what i've been thinking of i've sort of had that in my mind as i'm doing i'm like oh i'll give that a go but it might it might be awful you never know until you actually do it otherwise yeah i'm sure i can come up with something oh, let's just get that Um, actually, let me just make that a whole thing. Pretty pixels. Thank you very much. Oh, this is a fun wall. Wall of fun. Real nice colors. Mmm. Haley's got the, the same nice colors going on over there. You're really enjoying yourself, aren't you? Yeah. <laughs> I'm nearly finished with sheets. Oh god. Oh, thank you very much. I am quite quite sleepy, actually. Thank you. Uh, thank you. I'm starting to bloody, oh, starting to fade. All right, what do we got? Let's go with. We'll cut that grouting back. Just a touch, maybe. Yeah, that looks okay. It's all right. I'm also just missing that. Looks all right for just a blue wall. So now it's time to try to make something fun happen with it. But I'm pretty happy with that for just as a blue wall. Coffee, go look at the horizon outside for a moment. Yeah, definitely. The film adaptation of the game. Who would you cast as the wall? I didn't cast you, Lucas. Lucas, you get to be the wall. Yeah, you get to be the wall. 
<laughs> uh, let me just have another look at. Oh, yes. Just jump back over here. I'm just gonna have another look. Time cast, yes. <laughs> All right, let's see what I got here. So, okay, cool. I do little got to fix that. I'm just if you're wondering what I'm looking at here, I'm just looking at this bit here where the actual these are my top caps. I'm looking at where the top cap joins the wall. There. That is correct. That is the very same Lucas. <laughs> <laughs> Just make dinner was amazing. <laughs> <laughs> oh, let me swap back to this one. Pixel edit. Whoa. Okay. Uh, so what I'm going to do? Let's just put that in there like that because that's what I've got. <laughs> whole series of just making dinner. <laughs> Get on to it, Lucas. Yeah, you're sorted now. You're locked in. I'd watch that. Yeah, I'd watch that. Yeah, I'd totally watch that. Ah, oh, the 64 by 64. This one. Check out some of the videos on the Heartless Corporation YouTube channel. Mm. They're good. Yeah, they're pretty good. They're pretty good. Alright, I've got a new... A bit here where I can see if I can actually make something out of this. Okay, and I reckon I am actually going to stop for a coffee right now, because I am getting pretty sleepy. So I'm not going away, but I am stopping for a coffee. Um, so I'll be back in a couple of minutes, much like last time. I'll have a coffee, and I'll jump back into it, and then I'm going to try to animate up this wall, this wall here. I'm um, probably doing a couple of the, the light things that I was talking about to see if um, I can get that looking good. Otherwise, I'll do something else to try to make it look all fancy. Probably pulse the grouting or something like that. But we'll figure out when we get back. So, bye. I'll see you in a couple of minutes. Whoa! Paid advertisement! <laughs> Very nice, Lucas. Thanks, Lucas. <laughs> all right, we'll be right back uh, in a couple of minutes.
Hello, hello, we are back. Well, I am back. Haley is having something to eat. But in the meantime, I'll let me catch up on the chat that I've totally missed while we're off having a coffee. And I've got another coffee here too, which is lovely. Oh my gosh. Nice to see an update on what Haley's been working on. Ah, yes. Definitely, I will do that. Let me crack open what Haley's been doing as well. Oh, that's nice. Thank you so much about, yeah, I'm glad that the live stream actually, um, is working and everything. I basically, I sat down yesterday and I was like, look, if I want to do live streams, I want to do it sort of properly. So I sat down and actually looked at, you know, how OBS works and made up like the different title cards for it and things like that. So, um, and played around and hopefully right now the microphone's on and you can hear me. Looks like you can. Um, so yeah, so I'm still sort of getting used to it, but I'm glad that it all kind of works and, you know, working out the scenes and all that sort of thing as well. Uh, let's have a look. And hello, if you're still here. Thanks for joining us. You joined us right in the middle of when I was just going to get coffee. Yeah, thanks. Yeah, it's, um... I'm, I'm always, like, i got always got the opinion with stuff like this. I'm like, if you're going to do it, you might as well just... Like, it didn't take me long to put in a bit of effort and to learn how to do it, so you might as well just do it good, you know what I mean? Like, rather than just sort of wing it and just chuck it straight up on your phone or something like that, so... Alright, let me show you what we've got with Haley's stuff. So, let me just open up. Alright, so Haley's been working on our god mask here, as we call it, which is like a god head. So this is the old one here. So this was when we were working out the sort of basic animations for them and the basic shape and everything. We kind of just did this palette up, like just because it, like it had, you know, this, it was good enough for, for what we needed it to do and we didn't have to think too hard about it. It's obviously pretty naff, I mean it's like, you know, kind of like this horrible green and orange, but it, we were never going to stick with this. This was always just done up for something to animate with. So that's the sort of basic animations that we have done and you've, you would have seen in the past before. So the new palette is here and this is with the additional shading. So Haley's going through and um, we've bumped up the shading on the actual face for most of these. You can see there's like really quite dark underneath the eyes there, for example. Let me jump up to the old one at the same spot. Bup, 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 bup. This brush is huge. Uh, it is... Yeah, it's just in the normal base one. So, that's the old one there. And the new one. You can see that we've obviously got a little detail on the eyes and everything as well. But, we've really got the shading going on underneath, like, the actual eye sockets. So they're, like, really sunken sort of eyes compared to what we had originally there. And... Yeah, we've settled on this sort of colour palette for him as well, because we really want him to pop quite a bit. Now, he is going to also change colour, depending on certain things. Like, if he gets angry, he's probably going to go red, and things like that. You know, like, actually, sort of steam rising off him, and that sort of jazz, because we want to, like, have him really emote to you. And you don't really... The idea is that he can convey his... How he feels about you, ideally, without accompanying text, or even audio clues. Like, you're, obviously, we'll have those sort of cues as well, but... Just the visual of him should tell you how he feels about you at any given, given time. But yeah, it's great. It's I especially love like the really bright like cyan highlights that we've got on him because that gives him again a lot more sort of depth than what we were looking at in the original here, which is really when you compare it like that, looks pretty naff. So Haley's been going through this today and basically stepping through each frame of the animation that we already, <coughs> well, excuse me, that we already have done up. And especially working on things like the eyes down here. So like, because on the original one here, the sort of crazy eye variant, it was basically just pupils floating around on like sort of just black for the actual eye themselves. So we've got a lot more detail going on there with that. And especially getting the sort of like the hypno stare type thing going on there. And the eyelids are another big one, too. They were really, really flat in this original one. They were just a dark green. That's it. 
So yeah, I think nearly done on this sprite sheet so far. I'm pretty sure nearly all of the frames are done here. So let's have a little look at the actual animation and see what we've got. So we've got him talking, which I will probably also animate just in here as well. But for the moment, it's just the jaw wagging at you. It's got him disappearing. Doing his weird Cheshire Cat type thing and then buggering off. As he will occasionally do things like that, he'll just naff off and not be on your HUD for a bit and then he'll come back at a, at a different point. And he's got an appear, which is more or less a reversal of that one, but he, there's a couple of different frames in there too. He's got just a blink when he's just hanging out. There's a laugh when he particularly enjoys you absolutely murdering yourself, which is normally when that's going to trigger. And then him getting quite skeptical of you and there's a lot more animations that we have on some other sheets as well so we're gonna have to go through that as well yeah it's like yeah she's done a fantastic job it's like yeah really picked it up super fast like you can see the progression in sort of like the early things that we've done moving on to now and it's yeah it's looking absolutely great so far what i got here the god must reminds me of the characters in the old coin up arcade attacks i don't know i'm not familiar with attacks let me have a quick look at it attacks Oh, wait, I remember this. Wow, okay. Yeah, I can totally see that. I can totally see that. Let me pop it in a... Whoop, oh no. We just crashed on there. Oh. I was going to say, because I can't capture the screen here outside of pixel edit so i was gonna paste something in for you there we are that's a tax i do see the resemblance <laughs> all right let me get rid of him there but yeah no he's, he's looking really great at the moment Just save a couple more files here as well and i'm gonna get started on jazzing up this wall a bit so we've got commands so you probably can't see me saving the file here it'll be one sec and we'll get into it again Yeah, I think they're looking really great now. Like, I think they looked pretty good before, but like then now they've sort of really gone on the next level. Yeah, I've had, um, we've had a couple of crashes lately, especially with, um, giant sprite sheets. We've had a, cu a couple of issues with, with, um, pixel edit, but, um, uh, yeah, it's doing all right for us. But yeah, the main reason we're not going to swap over now is we've got everything in these all our surprise sheets are in like this format and it's just like we'll probably end up swapping over um yeah next project i reckon so nice things just kind of stick with what you got most work i've lost due to crashes i really haven't i've been pretty lucky i haven't lost much i, I do back up um absolutely religiously though i have a um a nas or a server basically that um backs up uh, every day from what we're doing and that also goes up to the cloud as well and the nas itself has two drives that mirror each other so there's like four backups all going on at once and then even on my computer i've got yes we do have version control for it we use i can't even remember what it's called actually let me have a look what do we use for our version control it's source tree with bitbucket i believe so yeah so we've got a bunch of um yeah, bunch of backups and versions all going on at once. So I've never really lost too much. Um, on Bannerman, I didn't have the NAS, but I'd still, I did manual backups then and manual sort of version control, basically, where I sort of every day, I, well, semi, semi manual, it was kind of half automated, where, where I like iterated through each time and like overwrote the ones from five days ago. And it was sort of like semi automated. And it was just on like a USB um, drive that then got saved to another one i've always been paranoid about losing everything i've seen some horror stories so so i'm i'm not willing to sort of tempt fate with it all right
Right, let's see if I can come up with something for this to do. I'm going to try the old lightning and the grouting, because I think that might work, but eh, we never know. So let's import a palette here. I'm going to go the, uh, it's the intro palette that I'm using, which sort of doubles as our kind of magic fancy palette, which has all the bright blues and oranges and greens and things like that. And I might just do green because I'll be able to see it see what I'm getting at so let's just start with that there, that there, there and I can go down here as well uh, let's have a look magic wall and what I'll do is I will just make a animation with a bunch of frames and I'm not going to shade them or do anything too fancy at the moment. I'm just going to step through and move these lines around. And if I like how it's generally looking, then I'll go through and uh, make them look kind of pretty and sort of interact with each other in a bit more of an interesting way. But to start with, I'll just see if this is even worth attempting or not. So I might do another one coming from the side there, actually. Beautiful. All right. gonna make it start moving around and we'll see if this starts to look any good or not Let's be on with that. That was going up and then to the right. Do you have days when you doubt your project or feel unmotivated? I certainly do. Uh, what do you do to push forward? Um, uh, it's one of those things. I just try to, I try to sort of keep a bit of perspective to it and try to remember what it is that I'm actually doing here and like how much time that I've already um, committed to the project and things like that. Like I think everyone has moments where they're just like, "Oh, this is crap. This is never going to be any good." Um, no matter what I do, it just ends up being an absolute pile of junk. But I think the the best way to go about it is to just sort of look at how much uh, effort you've put into it so far and try to remember that you wouldn't have done that just out of the blue, just as a waste of time. There is something there that you can make into something really good. Yeah, <laughs> drink more coffee. <laughs> I mean, but yeah, everyone has has terrible days like that where you're just like, I hate this, I hate everything. But that goes with like any job. I mean, it, it, job or even hobby. There's people out there that make model trains and things, and little model train tracks, and they go, oh, this sucks, I hate this model train track, it's never going to be good enough. It's just like, yeah, a bit of perspective, I think, always seems to help me at least. any here Whee. that's starting to look okay
Alright. Haley has returned. You know, I've actually been playing lately, and I kind of missed the missed the boat on this one. Um, I've been playing the Return of the Obra Dinn, which is uh, his name's Lucas Pope, I believe. Um, made papers, please. Absolutely fantastic game. I thought I was pretty much glued to that until the end. I like my sort of detective type games, and I think that's like the best one I've played so far. And I highly recommend that to anyone that enjoys that sort of general adventure game. type thing like yeah sort of discovering mysteries and that sort of thing absolutely fantastic <clears throat> no. yeah it's one of those ones I'd, I'd been keeping an eye on um, for ages but uh, for whatever reason I just never ended up getting around to playing it I'm glad I did I basically sat glued to the computer for like an evening until I um, ended up polishing it off. Just down there. Okay, I'll go down here. Alright, catch you later, Vin. Enjoy. Have a good night's sleep, will you? Yeah. <laughs> Let's have a little look at what I've got going on here, see if it's... Oh yeah. Bit too much of a jump on that last one. Oh, I think I could probably make something like that work. Ah, oh, hello Rosalind! <laughs> it's good to see you. Glad you could join us. We finally got... Some decent internet, so yes, we're actually able to do things like a live stream now. We've wanted to do one for ages, but um, hopefully it'll become a regular thing now. It's certainly pretty good at keeping you motivated. I mean, I've got to do work, otherwise I'm just literally sitting here doing nothing, so. <laughs> Let me just fix up that last frame there. It's a little bit average. Bum, 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 bum. I think that jumps too far too, actually. All right, let's keep going. And now it's about the time where I can start to tell if this is going to look any good or not. Of course, imagine it with prettier effects than just green lines. <laughs> All right. And of course I'll have to make this loop, which will be quite painful. To try to wrap my head around, but let's have a little look. Oh, that's not bad. Yeah. Z Imagine if that continued all over him, but actually made prettier than just green lines. I reckon that could probably work. Might be able to do something like that. Sparkly effects. Um, let's try something else while I've got like the sprite sheet here. Because I'm not totally sold on that. So that's our, that's our little wiggle lines. Let's call that magic wall wiggle. And... Let's try Magic Wall Pulse, where I might just try to pulse the grouting, which will probably be a lot easier to do and take a lot less effort, let's say. Hello, Bizmaster Studios. How are you today? I hope you're very well. Thanks for joining us here. We are making a blue wall. <laughs> very exciting. <laughs> So for this one, let's just get 
old grading first of all and I'll just do it like this because it's probably just as fast as doing anything else what is this <laughs> also hi hi uh, this is us making assets for our game called commandment my name is Michael and this is Haley and I'm currently making a magic wall and Haley is making a an angry god Yeah. All right. All right. There's my graphing there. Lovely. So let's copy that over to each of these, and let's just simply give this a bit of a pulse and see how that comes out. Might look alright. Might not. Put a cat in for lols. Let's see how that comes out looking. Womp. Yeah, see, that could work, especially with some particle effects with it. That might be the easier way to go. Ooh. Yeah, I like that. Especially if I make that grouting translucent. So why don't I remove the grouting from the original? Well, <laughs> that pacing picked up again. The coffee did kick in. <laughs> so it's says, great to watch your stuff and hear your stories and inspirational. Someone who is slowly working towards a similar dream. Thank you very much. Go for it. Thank you. Yeah, good luck with it. Good luck. It's, yeah, takes, takes a while, but it ends up happening eventually. <laughs> so have a look at that. That's not bad. Oh, I don't mind it. I should probably open it up. That is really simple, easy way to do it. I could even pulse him a different color, which I might do. Nice. It does look all right. It looks pretty magic. And especially if I drop the opacity on that in game and have it as a screen I smoked the coffee with crack oh thank you very much <laughs> that's why it works so well uh, also I'd love to make a game I'm just way too stupid no it's it's just it's all about just um, time spent that's all it is you don't have to be smart to make a game you just gotta spend a lot of time doing it that's all there is to it And a bit of an overlay, we could do that. That's looking alright. Alright, so we're gonna go with something like that. I am pretty happy with that. That's it, persistence, exactly. So I'm I am happy with something like that for our magic wall. It will very much do for the meantime. Have the slightest idea where to start. Ah, you start at the very, very beginning here. You need to learn how to do a bit of programming or a bit of art. And then once you learn a bit of that, then you move on to learning a bit more programming, or a bit more art, and then you learn a bit more of the other. And you learn a bit more of like, you know, how to do music and sound effects and things like that. And then before you know it, you know how to do the entire thing yourself. And it took you about 15 years. <laughs> The wall looks alive. Yeah, it's it's a sim nice, simple trick. That one, I like it because it's really easy. So, done deal. A stream. Yes, hello. Yes, we are streaming. 
We've been streaming for quite a while now. How long have we been streaming for? It has been three hours and 40 minutes, believe it or not. I die from a bread of eating. Well, yes, that's always a risk. That is a risk. <laughs> that's a risk you're going to have to want to take. All right, let me export these. Uh, I'm going to go pulse first. And I'm just going to export these. You probably won't be able to see where I'm exporting them due to the way the capture works. But I'll be back with you in just a second when I put these all in the right spots. So let me go into our drive there. Commandment local. Let's Okay, so that's magic wall, and then we'll call that one special magic wall glow. Naming your files consistently is super important when you've got a million, like, just PNGs everywhere with every single animation and everything you've done. It's on different layers and different files everywhere. Let's go that one there, glow, and then I'll turn that back off and we'll go save. Okie dokie. Now, what's next on my list of things to do? So I can cross that one off. Da -da 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 -da. Oh. We have. What have we got? Uh, it's got the shotgun pellets. We've done the explo uh, lightning explosion, the lightning bolt, got the barrier. Oh, we need a. Uh, there's a summonable friendly character that you can um, you can create. I thought I might give him a go. That's. Um, <laughs> We're gonna need more of that coffee for that one. Okay. Well, let's give him a little go. So what I'll do is he's going to be roughly about the same size as the player character. So in our case, that is 32 by 32 pixels. But what I might do here is I'll just double check that pixel edit is happy here because we did have an error before. So I might just restart pixel edit. So let me just pop back onto that camera for one second. I'm just going to restart pixel edit here to make sure it is in fact happy. save all my files and then we'll get started on this little summonable guy and again I don't even know what I want him to look like this is not something that has been um, planned up make it a fairy fairies need more respect if we get too much hate I will not be making it a fairy it is not a fairy it is a it is a spirit orb is all we've got written in our game design document here so I have no idea some sort of ghosty thing it might be somewhat person shaped or it might just float around I'm really not too sure I have no idea what we're gonna do yet but we will get to it special magic wall let's get rid of that and that and that okay so I'm just gonna restart him here he should be almost ready to go and let's see if pixel it comes back up bang there it is excellent ghost fairy XP Hmm. Is that XP as in Windows XP or is that a face? There you go, Windows XP. Sorry, I've had too many coffees now. Alright. So, so. We'll do 32 by 32 for this fella. And we'll probably make him float around, but I'm not even sure what I want him to look like. I don't want him to look too cute and, and happy because that's not what the game looks like. I mean, I could make a cute little ghost, but... Um, Hmm, well, we'll see. I'm just going to open up uh, some of the player animations here as well. So I've got them just for reference for size and scale and things like that. Because I don't want him too big. He's not that um, not that grand as of a spell. So let's have a look. Where are we? What do I got here? No, those are all the weapons. That is not what I want. Is that? Hmm. 
Player animations. Make it dick button. Now that's a good idea. <laughs> Definitely. It's a fine idea. <laughs> I haven't seen old dick butt in a while. Alright, so let me just merge this down so I've got this guy here. So I'm just going to get our base player and pop him on in. Just so. You sketch all your assets on paper first or die straight into pixel art? Uh, to be honest, I often come up with something first um, on paper or on computer, to be honest, and then iterate through. But today, because I am kind of going through. A bunch of things that are likely going to get cleaned up and replaced later, but I need something to get them in the game now and get their behaviour right instead of just having a block. I'm just getting sick of looking at squares and circles and things like that. So I just want something in that looks sort of vaguely right and then I can see if I want to change it again in the future. That's why I'm not spending too much time on this either. I'm kind of going through it pretty quick. Oh yeah, that's a good example. You made something in blue tack. Let's see. Oh, there he is. <laughs> That's the model for the god. Yeah, I found him helpful when I was just first planning out the animations, especially like with his head tilting and stuff like that. Um, and I think he started out on paper too. Yeah, yeah, he did. Oh, yeah. yeah, definitely did. Okay, so what am I going to do for this? Do I have any ideas at all? Not really. Okay, so he's going to be somewhat, he I mean, he doesn't even have to actually be humanoid, he's just a thing. He's a thing that you summon, he's almost like a wisp is kind of how I'm imagining him. So, let me import our magic palette again, perhaps, or maybe I'll just go to the primary palette for this one and see what I can do. For him, I might just start with some general shapes in bright colours, because that's always the way to go, and I'll see if I can get him, get something that kind of floats around a bit, and, um... Do I want something to throw it Maybe I want something that slithers across the ground. Not too sure. Let's see what I got. Let's see how much. Let's see how much time I've got until this coffee dies out again, and then that's probably me done for today. To be honest, once this wears off, because <laughs> it's yeah, <laughs> it's it's sort of hitting that point. So let's go something with a. Let's go a bit of a torso on him first. So we've both got the chat. <laughs> I'm just so, a bit slower at checking it. <laughs> that's not really a spirit, that's more just like a little dude. Oh, he's cute. Yeah, he's kind of sad. He's creepy and hunched over. Oh, I might go with him and see what we got. Nah, I'm not going to do that. He's kind of cute though. Well, you just summon a hunchback. <laughs> well, he's only about that big, too. That could be pretty cute. What do you reckon? I quite like him. Let's give him a go. Why yeah. not? We don't really have any much anything else much going on at the moment, so let's give him a bash. Pop him in. Pop him in. Alright, well, let's see if I can animate him. So he needs to stand and walk. He's too cute. I think it's a little bit too cute. Maybe. That's quite nice. I was saying, oh, it doesn't need to be anything too nice, and then it's just like, oh, okay. Problem is, is there's one of these little stumpy boy. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, uh. that's it. Difficult to animate unless you're doing the cliched, like, super indie animation thing where you got, like, two frames to walk. 
and that's sort of not really what we're going for. We're going for the more this sort of style down the bottom here. But yeah, I'm not too sure about him. It's a Russian winter cap. Hmm. <laughs> Let me have a look at. I'm just gonna do a bit of inspiration here. Let's see if I've got some of these old enemy tests that we did. Yeah, he's pretty cute. Hmm. Not quite what we want. I don't want him looking too similar to that either. Enemy concepts. What do we got here? We had more than this. But they're actually the concepts. Uh. Mm. Oh wow, this is so old. <laughs> Ancient. Yeah, that's your first attempt at pixel art, isn't it? Pretty much. Yeah, praise the sun happening over there. Yeah. Jesus. That's oh, kind of embarrassing. <laughs> Sorry, I'll get rid of it. Um, okay, no, so... Right. Uh, uh, I don't... We're not taking any, any song suggestions because these are all songs that we own the copyright to. So sorry if you've heard them like a thousand times over by now because we've only got like maybe an hour of music here. Something like that. Like the diver. <laughs> yeah, he's he's gonna continue. I mean, he will be in the game, but he's he's gonna look a lot different to that. A lot better. A lot better. <laughs> uh, yeah, I don't know. Uh, what have we got? I'm kind of drawing a blank on this one. I don't know. I reckon I'm about pretty much done for today, to be honest. So I have a look at that. Uh, yep. I'm probably gonna call it for now, guys. Because I'm starting to feel that coffee wearing off and I can't really come up with anything on the top of my head that I want to do for this little fella. So I'll have to, I think I'll have to do some designs and jot him down on paper first. But I thought I could wing it. But not quite. I have to go for a walk and think about it. Pretty much. Yeah, it is about time to go for a walk. Get out of here. So, all right. Thank you very much for joining us, guys. I'm um, glad you could join us today. Um, hopefully we'll be doing lots more of these. Uh, seems like you guys like them and they're pretty fun to do, to be honest. So, um... Not sure how often we're going to be doing them. We'll just see if we can work that out. And we don't really have a schedule set yet. So um, I'll probably make posts on sort of uh, Twitter and Facebook and things like that if we do manage to nail down a schedule for it. I will enjoy the cracked coffee. Thank you very much. <laughs> All right. Cheers, guys. Thank have you. a good one. See ya.